Hey everybody, it is Sunday, June 29th, and this is episode 130... No, this is episode 12 <laughs> of the Super Game Talk Turbo Close. HD Remix Podcast. We're almost there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll put on an episode a month or, you know, every other month, you know, we'll get, we'll get to 100s pretty soon, you know, the next 10 years or so. I'm your host, Capanius, and as always, I am joined by the omnipotent... Vertigo Tea Party. David is in. That's probably not right, but I'm sure. I've, and, and this podcast's over. Because oh, wow. you just said goodbye. No. Oh, did I? Oh, I well. think so. I don't know any language but English, and even that's a struggle. Yeah. Um, so, we have been playing games and buying games. More the, and more the buying. Not always playing the games we're buying, but we're coming off, off the... Uh, the final days of the Steam summer sale. Well, when I look at a game, I think first, how will this look in my backlog? <laughs> exactly. That's this the most look, important part. This will look really good in my backlog. Yeah. Let's put that there. Especially if you've got a series of games. It's like, oh, you know what? I would, I would complete that series if I had this game. <laughs> I complete so. this series of games that I have not even started. Yeah. <clears throat> Assassin's Creed. <clears throat> Splinter Cell. Yeah. Yep. That's, I'm on the process yeah. of doing that. Completing series and then thinking, I should play that someday. So, about how many games do you think you bought? So far, at least a dozen. Yeah. I've spent probably upwards $80, $90 so far. Which, I mean, if you think about it, a dozen games, yeah. 80 or $90, dollars That's what like a deal. the price of like one and a half games. You know, at work, I showed a console peasant, I showed him the Steam sale, and he was like, oh my god, like that's super cheap. I'm like, yes. Yes, it is. Peasants, mm-hmm. now, away with you. Yes, the glorious master race has no time <laughs> for you console peasants. It's funny when they do see people like, well, Xbox has sales too, and then you look at their site, and it's like 15% off yes. of this $60 game. It's you like, want to pay $5 less? We got you covered. <laughs> like, PlayStation had a, or, yeah, Sony, rather, had a sale on the PlayStation games during E3. Mm-hmm. It was like the special E3 sale. It was literally like $3 off. Yeah, and the way they market it, it's like, Super Duper Flash sale. Yeah. Like, we're going nuts. We're slashing prices. <laughs> and then you look at it, it's like, man, that's not really that cheap. I couldn't even buy, like, a McDonald's value meal with the with the difference of money I would have saved. You're so we are so spoiled by Steam. When you oh, start yeah. comparing it to like <laughs> how many cheap fast food. How much cheap fast food could I buy is the difference between yeah. what this game is and what it normally is. So <laughs> Capanius, what have you picked up in the Steam sale so far? Um Well tell me about all the games that you've bought. During the Steam sale I got um From Steam. Oh, from Steam. Um, yeah, I'm, it's, I don't know if I'm ashamed or proud of the fact that I haven't bought anything. Shame should be what you're feeling right about now. Cause I, I don't know. I feel like usually when you talk about the steam sale, it's like, oh, I can't believe how much money I spent. So I, shouldn't it be applauded that I no, haven't spent any money? Absolutely not. Okay. okay. It's like going, well, also, it would I'll, be like going to a buffet and not eating anything. Because when you eat at a buffet, you're like, oh, I ate too much. If you walk out of a buffet and be like, I kind of control myself in there. You done screwed up. Yeah. But it's not like, but I didn't pay. I didn't go inside the buffet. I just stayed outside. No, you're cool. automatically in the buffet. You're okay. automatically in, in this analogy. I this yes. forcefully been bought my way into. The you buffet. are a member of the PC Master Race, therefore you are automatically included okay. Okay. in the Steam. There's and still th- time. I mean, it's not over. I'm gonna go and buy some games tonight, just that I don't even want. Just yeah, just buy know. them. I was. I really wanted to get Stick of Truth. But it didn't go below like forty bucks. Yeah, there wasn't a big discount on that one. Yeah, unfortunately. And I there was there wasn't many games that I was super wanting to get. I mean, a lot of games I've already gotten. Although, a, a thousand one spikes isn't on sale, is it? I don't. I don't remember if I've seen it on sale or not. That's not your cup of tea. But isn't it a more roguelike type thing again? It's not really a roguelike. Or a super hard platformer. It's super. Or... Yeah. Okay. It's just well, I like Super like, Meat Boy. Yeah, yeah, it's more like that. But it's it's also like remember retro games, and I know you hate those games. I don't hate like, those. Retro I aesthetics. think it's like super milked. Like I'm yeah. si- I'm sick of like it being given or shown as a huge like look at this thing we're doing that nobody's done. Yeah. It's like no, you mean they uh, like the pixelated graphics yeah. and the retro. To me, it's like it's really hard to do it really well. But when you do it really well, it's pretty cool. 
Like, I feel like Rogue Legacy did a really good job with the music and the presentation. I love that one. Um, I like that game except for the roguelike parts, which is, like, the majority of it. Yeah. But, like, for a roguelike, it's higher It's higher up my list, which is low on my list. But that's yeah. just because I hate the genre as a whole. I saw somebody comment on... Uh, I, I watched the, you know, Rogue Legacy's coming to PS4, mm-hmm. PS Vita. And I saw a comment on Twitter, and somebody said, Oh, it's like a Metroidvania roguelike. And it's like, why don't we have words for these games? <laughs> like, well, we can't even figure it's out... an amalgamation of game uh, names well, we pushed can't together. Even, we would have a hundred of them. Because, like, look at RPGs. Like, RPGs, I think, are one of the worst offenders of this. Just because how big the umbrella of that yeah, genre is. Yeah, because you have, like, Witcher 3, Skyrim, and Dark Souls... RPGs. You could probably throw like Dark Siders in there too. I would call those Western action RPGs. So, even, but even if you look at it like that, Witcher, let's put Witcher three or Witcher two, and Skyrim and Dark Souls as action RPGs. Those games are vastly different in how mm-hmm. they play all of them. So, and technically, Dark Souls is open world. You can go pretty much wherever you want and right from the get-go. I mean, you'll get destroyed, Yeah, but uh, people do it. Speedrunners do it all the time. But then couldn't you say that, like, uh, you know, Final Fantasy 1 was an open-world game? Because you can go wherever you want. You can, go to the, you can go to a dungeon that's really dangerous for you, but you shouldn't at that point. I guess, I guess so, yeah. Because I don't yeah. think open-world means you can go there and kill stuff. I think it means, open like... Open-world means you press triangle to steal the car, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, I don't know. I think it's the RPGs in particular are such different games because people yeah. always compare like Skyrim and Dark Souls because I don't know why. Yeah. But and they're not alike at all, other than the RPGs. I mean, they have similar very base stats. You level mm-hmm. up, you cast spells, you use melee weapons, you kill enemies for loot and all this. But other than that, there's pretty much nothing similar about the two games. There's there's math. There is probably there's some numbers math. and there's statistics. So I mean, the the label role playing is derivative of D and D, right? Like I think so because like that was before there were role playing video games. There's role playing D and D was games. considered role playing. Right? Represent, yeah. <laughs> Played so, the hell out of that. But. When uh, Final Fantasy came out and this wave of Japanese games, they just like, hey, we have hit points, we have systems. You level it's up. like a role playing game. We have game, classes. You know? Yeah, you have. You play the role of a wizard yeah. or a fighter. Because Nintendo and Super Nintendo, like those games were pretty big, even over here. Like, yeah. Um, Dragon Warrior. Yeah, I remember playing through Dragon Warrior. Uh, Breath of Fire. I, Dragon Warrior is the first game I had to grind. Yeah, like that was a new concept for me. I remember thinking, "It's like, well, I can't really go to the next level, but the stuff here is kind of easy." So I was like, well, I guess if I keep killing stuff, I guess I can level up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's crazy you think now, it's like, well, duh. But like yeah. back then, it, that wasn't the way it worked. You just yeah. played and you just progress. When you yeah. can go to the next area, you go to the next area. But in this, it was like, well, I can't because I get, you know, totally beat down. So yeah. I was like, oh, I could just kill these easier enemies over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And now I'm more powerful. Now I can go to the next area. And I, I, I've been playing... Uh... When I get to my section of what I've been playing, you'll realize it's just a bunch of old retro crap like on Nintendo and Super Nintendo. But you were you were in Seattle too long. You were coming the hipster. It's rubbed yeah, exactly. off on you. Um so do you I'm gonna mispronounce this. Faxanadu? Fazanadu? I think it is I think it's Foxanadu. Foxanadu? I don't know. Anyway. The cool um, kids call it Fax. Yeah. Okay. Yo, man, did you play the Fax? Yeah. Yeah. I played Fax and um that game is very, like, requires gold farming. Uh, like, you get to a town, and it's like, you need these three key items to continue. And they cost 25,000 gold. It's like, I have 100. <laughs> and then, go well, outside. Get to work. <laughs> kill stuff. Go outside. Kill stuff. And it's gold farming. And, I mean, there was that in, like, Zelda. But there wasn't much gold farming in Zelda. Like No. You... And you couldn't even have that much gold. Yeah. Or rupees. Sorry. Rupees. Yeah. It was stored in eight bit register, so you're limited to yeah. two hundred fifty five. I mean, and you could do it if you wanted that like nice shiny shield, but yeah. you, it wasn't required. I still don't like, as a general rule, I don't like required grinding. Yeah, because they just I just get really bored with it. But 
Yeah. But anyway, yeah, just RPGs are just so many different ones. I mean, yes, we have, like, Western RPGs. We have um, JRPGs. We have... Action RPGs. Action RPGs. But like I say, even within those subgenres, for whatever RPGs. reason, RPGs always stick out to me as how incredibly different. Because, like, look at... Yeah. What I mean, would you call Dark... You play Darksiders, at least one. The yeah. first one. Yeah. Would you call it an ar- action RPG? Yeah. It's nothing like Skyrim. It's nothing like Witcher 3. It's nothing like But it's like a lot Dark like Siders. Zelda. And I would consider Zelda an yeah, action it's, RPG. Yeah, it's like God of War meets Zelda. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, I don't know, just one of those interesting things that I think we need about 20 different names. Yeah. But I haven't found another game like Dark Souls, though, which I find interesting. I fig- I find that interesting because Dark Souls, like, took off. It was such, like, a cult hit. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised that we don't see more games that are like, hey, we can do that. So, you, here we are. We're going to coin the term Dark Souls-like. <laughs> and the, the only new, Dark uh... Souls-like games are Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, and Demon Souls. Okay, so actually, they're calling them Souls games. Souls, yeah. yeah. So, People I bet you when Bloodborne games. comes out, it's still going to be called a Souls game. Probably. And so, when other companies make similar games, they're going to be called Souls games. I could, I could definitely see that. Alright, alright. Souls games, yeah. I've, I've heard people call them the Souls games, even before Dark Souls You don't 2. see that in other mediums, though, do you? Like, um, when a new, like, style but, of film Red's gets dogs like Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean... By the way, that, that movie was overrated. But anyway, that movie was pretty good. I but I mean, when things are really good, it's really easy to tell a line between overrated, like because I just thought it was okay. Like I didn't even think it was like good. Like I have no desire to ever watch it again. But I don't think it was bad. Like say, what dreams may come, which I think I'd rather hurt myself than watch that movie again. Like physically hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty bad. I, I don't know. I, just, so I really love the dialogue in Reservoir Dogs. Like, just, I mean, I understand that's what people like about it, but I didn't find the dialogue that captivating. Really? Mm, all I, right. Well, well, this isn't yeah. a movie podcast. <laughs> well, you talked about baseball yeah. the last time. That's Why true. Not a movie. But speaking of Dark Souls, mm-hmm. you've been playing some more Dark Souls too, right? Yes, uh, I've. I'm still not that far in it because I end up recording and doing my let's plays on youtubecom slash Vertical Tea Party. But um, I'm getting yeah, faster and faster at that. I know. I know. Dropping, you always got to be promoting. But yeah, I, I haven't made it that far in. Well, I thought I had was further in because I was telling somebody on that has finished it. It's like, oh, I feel like I'm about forty to forty five percent through because I just beat this boss. And he's like, Yeah, you're about twenty percent in. I was like, My <laughs> God! He's like, I've been playing this game for like twenty five or thirty hours now. Granted, wow. I tend to, in all games, I tend to kind of explore and look everywhere and try to find the hidden items. And I talk to the NPCs and I actually listen to what they say. So it takes me longer to go through a game, so that's fine. And I'm not complaining that the game, this game's too long. I feel like I got too much game for my money. <laughs> I want a refund. This game takes too long to beat. Like I uh, said, no one ever. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, it, it feels like I'm still just getting into it. But I, I beat the first like major boss, um, which I, I guess I won't spoil the name of it. I guess it's not really a big deal. But I think it's the first like major great soul. Anybody who's played will know what I'm talking about. But so. You're still ranking uh, Dark Souls 1 over Dark Souls 2 currently? It's hard to, like... I guess technically, yes. Apples and oranges? No, definitely not. It's not apples and oranges. There's definitely... that The same base mechanics are there. There's some significant changes, which I definitely want to talk about. But I... Did I did we talk about Dark Souls 2 in another podcast? Yeah. Did yeah. I? Okay. Well, I guess... La- I think last episode, our Mother's Day Spectacular... Okay. We talked about uh, Mother's Dark Day and Souls Dark Souls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like my mom went out and bought it. She was pretty excited. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, she's liking it. But, but yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I guess Dark Souls 1, I guess I like it better. But yeah. it's really not definitive. I haven't played Dark Souls 2 enough. I will say, and I've probably talked about this before, but I think Dark Souls 2, the beginning, is terrible. I think they did a really bad job at the beginning. Because it feels like overly punishing. Because it's like all of these things stacked up against you. And it's not... It doesn't feel... It feels more tedious than challenging. Yeah. And it's just, it was not fun at all for like the first two hours. But now that I've actually been able to up my survivability and my other stats and get some decent gear, I feel like, all right, now it's starting to be fun. I will say cool. this I've killed probably f- five ish bosses, mm-hmm. and the bosses are a big letdown so far. Like, oh, they're, that sucks. they're very standard. Like, it's like there's multiple times already, it's like, Ooh, it's like a boss. Oh, but look, there's multiples. So now I see you got to deal with multiples at the same time. That's happened like (laughs) 
ha- like three out of the five or six bosses I fought wow. were like, oh, the difficult because there's a bunch of them or two, two of them or three of them. It's like, all right, like I get it. Like, can we do something else? And then other bosses that are just by themselves are like very easy. I've one shot several bosses, which is crazy Whoa. for Dark Souls. Was it like an extremely difficult timing thing or something? Like, no, like like one boss, I think. You're supposed to find these switches before you find him. Appar- fight him, apparently, because I noticed, and it weren't. But it's not like they're hard to find. I didn't look it up, but they like on the way there. So yeah. I-, I could see people overlooking them. I guess did somebody leave a note like get all the switches or something like that? No, but because the way it's the way it's like the way you get to the boss arena area, you kind of see it from a distance, mm-hmm. and you're kind of working your way down to it. And when you pull these levers, you see the area you're fighting him. Like these like platforms come up. So that they, they're, you know, you can flatten the land out. So I could tell when I was fighting him, if you didn't have those platforms up, there'd be like a very small platform. And if you could easily get knocked in the water, but I'm like, all right, that's the gimmick, but it's a super easy gimmick. It would be like, it would be stumbled into the gimmick. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it's more of like for people who just like hack and slash their way through it and don't pay any attention and to punish them for doing that. Is there any special reward if you beat it without using those levers? I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. There could be. And that would be interesting, I think. An interesting yeah. idea. Or like maybe if you knock or get him to fall into the water, maybe you get some kind of special reward. Is like yeah. he dies by falling into the water. That'd be kind of cool. Because a... it seems like the um, the padding for yourself is so easy there that yeah. people are going to want to, for some reason, fight without that extra help. Yeah, and I wonder if there's some sort of reward for those for that. I'd be cool if there was. I think it'd be cool if there was, but I think that's more of a punishment because it seems like in this game they want to punish people who just like, like you know, attack spam and all this yeah. stuff. Like the durability, your weapon durability is a lot more uh, noticeable here. Though in the PC version, that was because they were calculating <laughs> it frame by frame. So if you're getting sixty frames a second, your durability went down twice as fast, which was horrific. I think they fixed that because my durability doesn't. I haven't had durability problems in a while, so I think they fixed it. But uh, they wanted to punish people who were just like spamming attacks. So like, if you hit an enemy while they're like dead, like they're falling or whatever, apparently it it does more durability damage. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to keep people from just like who spam like R one to attack. Yeah. But I wasn't doing that, and I was still getting big durability hits. So, but anyway, there's there's that, and I'm I'm definitely enjoying it more now. Um, but the bosses have definitely been a big disappointment. Like I think. One one or two bosses I one no two bosses I one shot. Uh, another boss I two shot. And I only had really trouble with one boss. Uh who who and it was one of those bosses where it wasn't a difficult boss, but I was just playing terribly. Mm-hmm. And I could I knew that's what was happening because I had the same problem with Quaylag. Like who anybody who's played Dark Souls, easy boss, but like I totally just for whatever reason, kept losing. The same thing was was with the Sentinel bosses. Like I kept losing one day. I was like, one day I was like, "Eff it, I'm playing terrible." I came back the next day, did like a test run just to kind of re re get myself used to the fight. And I was like, "All right, I'm gonna do this fight for real." Next fight, I beat them pretty easily. Yeah. So yeah, the bosses have been disappointing. Um, I'm hoping that changes. But I mean, I've like killed six bosses so far, and uh, and even this big boss that I was talking about that's supposed to be ooh, and this is a major boss, one shot it. So That's it was crazy. like, yeah. So like in Dark Souls in particular, uh, it's very interesting. And you can, but you can parry bosses in this mm-hmm. game, which is awesome. You can parry almost everybody. Wow. Um, which is really cool. Now you can't necessarily repost them, mm-hmm. but you can parry them. So it's interesting to see like a giant boss like swing a sword at you, and you like parry, and they're like, Whoa! <laughs> and they're like stunned for a second, which is pretty neat. I literally like that change. But um, but yeah, it's 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 definitely been a lot of fun very interesting i'm enjoying it so far someday i'll uh <laughs> take the plunge you really need i think to. i'm just gonna start with two i wouldn't really i've heard the opposite dark souls 2 is super hard to start with really mm-hmm. i've heard the opposite I've really just i don't see two. how dark souls 2 the problem with dark souls 2 is in the beginning when you die well pe- well always dark souls 2 when you die your max health drops a little bit like five percent up, yeah. And you can drop down to 50%. Um, to get your health back, you have to use an effigy. A human, like an effigy. Uh, and those are rare early on, and they're expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, you have no no or very few Estus Flasks. Like one or two Estus Flasks, which is used to heal. 
Uh, the and the things you do use to heal these like healing stones, they don't refresh on death or when you go to a campfire. Mm-hmm. So and like your stats are really low and all this other stuff. So it's like all this combination of things, and you can return back the human to get all your health back by assisting somebody with a boss. Mm-hmm. I think I haven't tried it yet, and you don't have to be human to assist with a boss in this game. I don't think, um, which is nice. But if you're not a multiplayer, then you're totally boned. Unless you yeah. can find those effigies again, right now I'm like I have like seven or eight human effigies, so it's not a problem anymore. But that early game, man, I hated it. Like, yeah. I was just not having fun because I'm running around at half health. I get hit twice, boom, I'm dead. Yeah. So, and then you have the durability problems, but that's been fixed, I think. But that that's just my opinion. I don't know. It's worth a, a shot. Yeah, I I've, really did not like the beginning. I plan on someday I'll get that get around to it. And story wise, I don't think it's important because I yeah. think they're totally different stories. Um, but I really like the way Dark Souls tells a story, which is barely like. Really, yeah, that sounds like sarcasm. But no, like just like it leaves more to inference. Right, you have to like really pay attention and listen to NPCs and kind of put things together and read item descriptions yeah. and read spells, and it's it's really interesting because with Dark Souls one, like going back and listen to the lore videos afterwards. And I don't think it's purely like people just making shit up. Like they usually reference like this is why we know this. Or this is why we think this. Like, this stuff that you think is random. Like, oh, this this enemy's here just randomly. Like, there's a reason for it. Yeah. Like, a lot of times there's a reason for these things that seem random. Which is really cool uh, how they do that. But, anyway, that's Dark Souls. So I heard you've been playing some uh, um, some more lighthearted fare, too. Like, uh, Watch Dogs? No, like... Uh, oh, the Wii U. Yes, yeah. I did purchase the Wii U. Against my better judgment... I did buy Man, a Wii U. It was very good judgment. I'm glad you bought a Wii U. Yeah, <laughs> so that you could come over and play. Yeah, yeah. So I come to play some Mario Kart. Yeah. Uh, I did buy Mario Kart, and I got the bundle with the Super Mario Brothers, uh, Super New Super Mario Brothers Wii U. Uh, and I also for my because there's right now there's a promotion if you buy Mario Kart 8 you get a free game, and I picked uh, Zelda Wind Waker HD. And first of all, the game looks phenomenal. Like. It looks just really, really good. Yeah, it does. Uh, I haven't got that far in it. I never beat Wind Waker uh, originally, and we were just talking about this before. I've actually never beat. I haven't beat a Zelda game since uh, Mario Link to the, or uh, Mario Link to the Past. Zelda <laughs> Link to the Past. So yeah, it's that's been, crazy. Yes, it is. It's craziness. I mean, aside from the Water Temple, Ocarina of Time is pretty good. What I hear, I've I've played like an hour or two of Ocarina. That's kind of the way it's been with all these. So old you didn't Zelda even games. get far in Ocarina mm-hmm. of Time. Despite I just console games owning just... a gold copy <laughs> like that is still out here sitting available, with... sitting right there. You could hook it up and play it right. He's now. pointing at it. Yeah. You have to trick, take my word on it. Yeah, yeah, but I yeah, am. I know. It's just console games for whatever reason. Like Dark uh, Dead Rising Three, I love the game. I haven't finished it yet. Like I just have a hard yeah. time finishing console games. I don't know what it is. That's why I have all of them because I'm a genius and I buy consoles that I barely use. But um, Mario Kart 8's been fun so far. It's kind of has that same... I've mostly been playing it single player. And I know the real fun of Mario Kart is multiplayer. And I haven't tried the online yet. But uh, it's... I've been definitely enjoying it. It looks great. Uh, it, can, it feels like it controls really well. It does have that typical Mario Kart shit that I didn't like in the past. Like, it picks certain racers. So like, okay, these guys will always be your competitors. And if they get too far behind, they'll get this magic speed boost that yeah. kind of get them back up. Uh, Mushroom Kingdom rubber banding. Yeah, yeah. Like, we can't figure AI out after a decade. But and then you have shit like there's been a lot of times I'm not just doing 50 CC and I'll be just blowing them away and then the last round I'll get hit by like a blue turtle shell and then two red shells and end up in third place mm-hmm. and there's literally nothing, nothing you can do about it as far as I can tell unless you can there's some way to dodge blue shells I haven't figured it out yet if there is I saw but, some article about it but I didn't click through because yeah. I don't own it I want it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fun. Travis played it a little bit. Yeah, I, we we played some Mario Kart. Um, I beat Johnny both times, yeah, so that's you know, I'm pretty confident in my abilities there. Um, we played some new Super. Well, there's new Super Mario Brothers U, and there's new Luigi Brothers. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know the what difference. the distinction is there. I uh, played some Wind Waker, and yeah, there's just a lot of games for it. I want to play. I want to play NES Remix. I want to play Pikmin. I want to play Doctor Luigi. I want to play. Um, Wind Waker, you know. So, I'm hoping to get one soon. 
We'll see. Be, and that'd be a great birthday present. I know, man. If wow. only I had a birthday coming up on ah. August 9th or something. <laughs> if only, um, if only it could be in my yeah. birthday stocking when I, I wake up on birthday day. <laughs> on birthday day, I like that. <laughs> but yeah, like I feel like at E3, Nintendo did a really good job yeah. of just showing up and being like, I, I feel like, like I haven't cared about Nintendo since 2006. Mm. Like after I got the Wii and I played Twilight Princess. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, this is a good system. And then just, like, nothing entertained me on that system. I yeah. sold my Wii. Um, I didn't even keep it. But um, I feel like Nintendo is best when their back's up against the wall. Like, and historically, like, when... Well, Super Nintendo, their back wasn't really against the wall at the time. No, but, well, there there wasn't against the wall, but they had, they had competition. A stiff competition and with the And Sega Genesis. was just like... Uh, they 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 didn't pull it off, but Sega like gave them a run for their money. Like they yeah. they they made them have to rethink their strategies and like do all this stuff. And Sega's marketing almost worked. <laughs> I actually bought. I had the original NES as a kid. I actually bought. Well, had bought. I don't remember. I don't remember how I got it, but I got a Genesis first. Cool. And I played it, and I liked it well enough, but. I don't. I don't really remember why. It's been a couple years. I don't remember why I didn't like want to keep it. We actually traded it in for a Super Nintendo. Oh, really? Yeah, that was the best. One of the better choices of my life because Super Nintendo yeah. turned out to be not that the Genesis was bad, but the Super Nintendo I think could unarguably be called one of the best consoles of all time. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, if you want to talk about the best, you know, then you start talking about you know more subjective opinions. But it's I think definitely easy top, top three. Yeah. Like, consoles of all time it's funny though because when i had a super nintendo i didn't have a sega genesis and when those ads started rolling in about how uncool it was to have a nintendo <laughs> you know i was pretty young and i was yeah. like Man, young i and... want a genesis like <laughs> and i i don't think i got to the point where i was like i want a genesis instead of a super nintendo but i really wanted a genesis yeah and um it, i never got one but i did get a game gear like and so Consolation uh, prize. Yeah, exactly. Like um, before the Game Boy Color came out, you know, it was Game Boy, and it's like, man, I, even though there was more games and better games in the Game Boy, you know, I thought it was so cool to have a handheld color system. Yeah, I, that was cool. I played the crap out of Sonic I was pretty and World jelly Series baseball. I had a Game Boy, and I was pretty jelly because, yeah. man, the Game Boy, God, it was so like if the lighting wasn't just perfect, yeah, it was such a pain to see the screen. Yeah, and they had all those add-ons. Like, because you see pictures now, but it was like the ultimate setup for your Game Boy. It's like the screen magnifier, <laughs> the speakers, and make the make the so buttons stupid. bigger. Yeah, it was insane. It was like uh, like the upgraded Game yeah. Boy. That's what I imagine what Pokemon would be like. Which I've never played a Pokemon, but my imagine of an evolution. Unfortunately, I've played every Pokemon. So <laughs> I don't know about that. Apparently, they're apparently really they're really fun popular. games, man. At some point, once Nintendo stops being a holes, I want to play. A Pokemon for the first time, and I want to do it blind ish. So, I guess what uh, specific Nintendo assholery is preventing you from Pick playing one? Pokemon? Pick one, but like, well, what specifically, well, because I, I want to wait until I can stream it or oh, okay. or help let's play it, and they're kind of dickwads about the whole let's play thing. So, you can, uh, oh, I see what you mean. So, if you even if you let's play it through an emulator, like. Well, I could do the old ones, and they really wouldn't care. But it's yeah. kind of a more of a principle thing. Like while they're being dickwads, yeah. I don't really want to promote any of the shit. Video even capture we're doing has it. always been a pain in the ass for any Nintendo port. It's not about actually capturing it. Like if basically with newer games, Nintendo games, like they've been slapping content IDs on them because they want the advertising money, even yeah. though they say it's because about controlling, right. blah blah blah. But they just want the free advertising revenue. Uh, so, but now they're like, "Oh, well, we're gonna make it better, and we're gonna work on an affiliate program." It's like, how about you just do like most other, well, not most, but a lot of other game companies are doing, and just give full allowance for people to promote your goddamn games for free? How about yeah. that? There's an idea. But it's crazy how like they did really good uh, with the games they presented at E3, and I yeah, think oh yeah, great content coming. They out. They had a great E3, but even amidst all that, 
uh, Reggie had this quote about how, like, oh, I don't think we're going to put Twitch on the Wii U because it's not fun to watch. I made a uh, tea time about that video. Really? I'm I sure you saw that. it because, you know. You, oh, yeah. Because you, yeah, 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 I subscribe that's and why watch you, everything you do. Yeah, I know you, that you ah, do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ah, that's why, I know um, that's why you brought it up, piece of shit. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I ranted about that. Yeah. In fact, that day I was going to buy my Wii U. And then oh, it came yeah. out, and I got pissed off about it because that's what I do. And I didn't buy it. The funny thing is, if he just said, we're not going to put Twitch streaming in there because it is a technical limitation of this console. Which is the truth. Which is the truth. Fine. I don't think anybody would have got pissed about it. Like, people would have been like, oh, ha, oh, ha, yeah. ha. But well, we fucking know that's you. why. Yeah, that's the truth. And yeah. it wouldn't have pissed people off. Instead, he like, lies. a lie <laughs> is like worse for press than if you just told the truth. Like, yeah, like that's... And that's the thing is, I like Reggie. But so like when he said touch. that, it's... They... He, they either have to be grossly out of touch, like grossly out of touch, Former. because Twitch has grown so much. Yeah, and every, this is like publicly available. They advertise it how much it's grown all the time, or they're just flat out lying. And I yeah. even I know Nintendo is synonymous with being out of touch, but yeah. you can't be that oblivious to how popular streaming is now yeah, yeah. and is getting. The last year was a huge growth in streaming. And I covered the stats in my, my Tea Time videos. You should totally check it out. YouTube.com slash Vertigo Tea Party. But, like, it's it's insane, like, to look at those numbers and go, eh, yeah, no. Yeah. People don't like streaming, I don't think. <laughs> they just don't like watching you stream I games. I think what he meant was that because of the technical limitations, there was no way to capture commentary. And it would have just been raw game. But he didn't say that, like, at all. Right. Like, he, he did didn't not say, say that. At all. And I think think maybe that's what was in his intent of communicating was but that is generous like yeah it's he, being incredibly generous yeah, I, I just think that was really stupid but th- all that aside like nintendo looks like they're on track again and they're making some good games and um but Which still, we will talk about no surely. metroid man they hate metroid see they haven't made a metroid since yeah 2003 yeah, because we're going to ignore that whole... I don't know what you're talking about. The whole... There's like a super game? Or uh other... other, other there's some other... Other Samus? Other Metroid. Other, yeah. yeah. That we, um, you know, apparently people don't talk about. Yeah. I need to watch a video of it. I need to go back and awful. play it. Just to... Just, 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 you did. I've you never should. played that Metroid. It's the only Metroid I've never played. So you even covered like the Game Boy ones and all in, that. Yes, I've played oh. every Metroid I, start to finish. I'm trying to get the idea you're a Metroid fan, especially with that yes. Metroid shirt. Oh, that I you're am. Wearing. Yeah, as yeah. you can see on the pot, you know, on the <laughs> sound waves. I'm Metroid beat the mother brain. Yeah, old school Metroid shirt. I'm a huge Metroid fan. In fact, one of the things I've been doing is going back and working on speedruns. So I have. Uh, have you seriously started uh, trying to do that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I told so you, like I, I, I just. One thing that's cool is um, with the EverDrive, I can manage as many save files as I want to because it saves it to the SRAM in like a file on the SD card. Yeah. So I can copy those off, and so like I can, I can work on as many branching paths as I want yeah. to. So. so are you actually like reading the community like suggested? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're like doing it all on your I own. I just want I just want to work on a it pure. The thing is, like, I can go on there and it can be a task of execution. Yeah. If I know the task, if I know the branch, if it's like, then it's like, I think it, it'd be quick to the point where I, I'm not making much time. But I think it's more fun if I Figured put out. it out my own branch yeah. and then just like work out and be like, all right, here's what I think is the solution. Look at the time and then go look at what the community's doing. Yeah. And just, so I'm going to do that. But yeah, like I've, I've started doing that and it's just, it's fun because I love that game. I beat that game. <laughs> probably 20 to 30 times like it's just my favorite game um so yeah i've just been playing a ton of old games like th- with the ever drives i got an 8-bit nintendo ever drive and what's cool about that one is that um it plays famicom disc system games which you know was an add-on for the famicom in yeah. japan where you put in floppy discs so oh, like, hey, yeah. metroid zelda those came out on the famicom disc system what was cool about them is that since they were on a floppy disk, you could save your game onto the disk. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know this, but in Japan, Metroid supported game saves. But when they ported it to Nintendo, you had to use passwords. 
I'd forget that. I thought I had game saves, but I mean, it's been yeah, a yeah. gajillion years. It never had I game saves Metroids. for the U.S. It was passwords. Remember Justin Bailey, infamous. Oh password. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but in Japan, you could save it to a floppy disk, and I even got to play uh, Doki Doki Panic. Oh yeah, which is like the um, the game that uh, Mario Brothers 2. Nintendo turned into Mario Brothers Two for the U.S. Which I loved Mario Brothers yeah. Two, by the way. I absolutely love that game. Like I still do. I oh yeah, it's yeah. And it's just it's interesting how all those characters. Because of this decision, like to acquire this company, they're in the Mario canon now. Like yeah. Shy Guys, Eggbird, or Bombs. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of characters that are in the Mario canon now because of that. Um, I played the uh, I played Super Mario Brothers two, the Japanese version. Oh yeah, which is it is pretty brutal. Like the very first thing you do is like it starts out and you get a mushroom. And then you eat it, or you touch it, and you die. Because they have poisonous mushrooms. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's where the whole poison mushroom thing started. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I actually beat that. Um, remember the Super Nintendo that it has was All-Stars? Lost Super Mario levels. All-Stars? Yeah. 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 It's kind of cool going back and playing it with the original, like, graphics. Was that one of the first HD remakes? Super Mario All-Stars for Super Nintendo? Um... Maybe. That's the first one I can remember. That's an SD remix right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Get the SD remix. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess so. Like, but you know, later on when, um, like, they bundled it, they had a cartridge that contained both Super Mario World and Super Mario All Stars. Oh, nice! So you got all four Mario's on one cartridge. Pretty cool. That's a hell of a lot of yeah. Mario games and the right and there. the lost levels. Um, but yeah, I need to, uh, I just need to go back and play through. I just like playing through all these games. Like, um, how about you play your new games? That you, I, know, oh, you, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I just get on kicks. I get on I kicks know. where I'm at. handheld kicks, console kicks, PC kicks. Now I'm on retro. Like I got a Sega CD. <laughs> Jeez. So, I played, uh, I'm, I just, you, you take your time and you find like something that just, it was like 20 bucks on eBay. So it's like, yeah. why would I not get a Sega? Why would I not? Sega. Um, so I played some Snatcher. Have you oh wow! Yeah. Wait, wasn't that one of those full motion video games? No, that one wasn't. But that one, it was like a text adventure game. Like I played some Sewer Shark. Oh god! Which is so dumb. It's wonderful. Like <laughs> it's so good. It's, it's like oh eighties. Where have you been? The dumbest thing. So I think we need to we need to uh, sign an online petition for a remastered version of Sewer Shark. Well, they tried to do uh, for. They tried to they had a Kickstarter for like a sequel to Eleventh Guest or something. Oh really? I don't know if it was success or not. But, but you know the this film is out there somewhere. Like when they filmed this and they down resed it so it'll run, yeah. run on you know, at terrible compression rates. Yeah. But the original film's probably out there somewhere. Somebody's got it. So you could restore it to HD. Can you imagine an HD version of Sewer Shark? <laughs> I would. That would be not st- watch that. I would love to live in a world where something that stupid could happen. Like <laughs> that would be amazing. But Snatcher is a Hideo Kojima joint. Really? Yeah. And so there's like all these like Metal Gear references in it too. Like, huh? It's really weird. It's it's totally like Hideo Kojima one day would just watch Blade Runner and he was like, <laughs> I want to make a game like that. So um. It's like this text adventure uh, where you play a, a like special anti-robotics cop kind of a thing. And so you got you start out and, you're, and you got to like... It's kind of like Police Quest meets Blade Runner. <laughs> it's just so weird. Um, played some Sonic CD. Played Sylphid. It's great because Sega CD had no copy protection. So you can burn whatever you want. Not that he has, of course. He I have done games. that. No! <laughs> the police kicked the door open. I've um, heard Sonic CD is one of the best Sonics, too. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know, like, I I didn't really dig into it too deep to see why people say that. I still love Sonic 2. Um, I still love the original Sonic. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little better than, um, was the, what was this Sega Saturn song? Was it Sonic 3D? Oh, I don't even know. Sonic Blast? Who knows? Know. Um, Poor Sonic. Yeah, man. It's Sonic. It's Sonic. is like Star Wars. I like, feel, the I, majority of content is bad. I yeah. I feel like, and I also kind of picture Sonic as Indiana Jones 
and the Crystal Skull. Yeah. Especially if you take the South Park's version of the movie. Yes. <laughs> like, I that's feel like that's Sega happening. with Sonic. Yeah. yeah. Sega is just an awful company, though. My God, but they're terrible. I don't know. Sonic Boom is the next one that's supposed to come out, right? But it's not I being made it. by Sega? Made by somebody else? So they maybe? can't possibly make it worse. Exactly. That's the thing. If it's made by Sega, it sucks. But uh, I've also been reading Console Wars, which is the uh, the book about uh, Nintendo and Where's- Sega. Uh, oh really? How's that yeah. so far? It's I really love like the content and the story and everything, but the guy who wrote it, like it's just every everybody's interaction is cloyingly pithy. Like they're all jokey and jabby and just like, hey hey, so then I said blah blah blah. And it's like that's not how the people talked. Like he, he I know like his intent was he wanted to keep this flowing as a narrative and he wanted to tell a story that wasn't cut and dry like just people talking business or whatever yeah but he just went way too far in the other direction yeah. and it's just uh but it's still like like if if i was an outsider and i didn't care about video games i would be like this is awful but the fact that i'm like into it yeah I'm totally but that makes sense games. i mean yeah you wouldn't really care to read about the ins and outs of like i don't know cat the the people who the caterpillar <laughs> shit. I mean, like the well, caterpillar wars. There was wars. a well written book about corporate drama between two companies and like the shit they were doing behind closed doors. If it was well written in any industry, I could see getting into it. Uh, smartest guy in the room. I want to read that one. Okay, Enron about Enron. I've I seen the the documentary. The, I've seen that too. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty um, good. Yeah, that is good. But that makes like, you hate them even more. Yeah, it's uh, great. Yeah. So this, well, Sega speaking did of books. Some, uh, crazy things though, like uh, you remember how Tengen released those unlicensed yeah. games on Nintendo? Yeah, like Tetris and shit. Yeah. So Nintendo, I guess, took them to court over that. But then Tengen countersued, and Sega was funding Tengen to keep Nintendo in courts. Oh wow! Which is just some shady stuff. And they were also using that, like Tengen was using that to leverage like releases, like they're releasing like Shinobi and all this yeah. stuff on on Sega platforms and stuff. Like it was weird. Well, speaking of books, just a very small tangent. Did you hear that Ready Player One? I think is becoming a movie. Oh, really? I think I, I, I think that. I saw that. I said it. I ever. It's on my wish list. I started reading it, and I like I I get, I'm so bad about reading the first ten percent and not finishing it. <clears throat> Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, hey, I'm almost done with book one. Oh, are you? Oh, yeah. okay. I mean, I gave you my copy about four years ago. You know what's been great? Audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how I had to get my friend Donnie. Uh, yeah. You've met him. Uh, that's how I had finally got him to quote unquote read it. Yeah. Because I'm like, you drive, you're stuck in traffic an hour each way every single day in traffic. Listen to the damn audiobooks. Yeah. And I fought him and fought him. And finally, he started listening to them. But, but uh, Ready Player One, if you're not familiar, I guess it's a, it's a book where, how does, like, what's the basic story? So the basic story is that in this, I guess, distant, future maybe near future ever like there's this game that's like huge like everybody plays this game like it's just so popular it's an mmo and it's like a virtual reality MMO, but everybody's playing this game and uh the guy who invented it is one of the richest people in the world and it's kind of like charlie and the chocolate factory like he comes up with this like i've hidden these easter eggs in these games and whoever gets it gets some prize or something and then um there's a i guess the there's a kid who's uh like um starting to like catch on to what these like hidden objects are in this game but um the interesting thing about it is that it references a lot of like deep cut old school games like even before like Nintendo Super Nintendo like yeah. text adventure like rogue like ZX Spectrum type stuff like stuff that's kind of before my time so I don't get it as much but um, still interesting like uh, and it's well written too like it's really yeah I've heard book. nothing but good things about yeah, that book yeah. so I definitely you should definitely check it out yeah this, I need to pick it up again listeners at home but um, as far as other games I've been playing I uh, just briefly Watch Dogs I did pick up Watch Dogs I've, I've been, been playing, playing that too I actually enjoy it quite a bit like, yeah it's good I mean I know there's a hubbub about the whole graphics being like dumbed down from what e th- what they showed at E3 which I will absolutely say was is scummy of Ubisoft 
And yeah. I really Ubisoft has really been improving. Like they had that stupid always online R D R M. Yeah. They took that off after they got a bunch of flack for it. They were running. They were doing some things with some of their games with uh, let's players and stuff, trying to like integrate. And it's like, oh, you know, these guys are competing, and so they really seem like, oh, okay, these guys are really starting to get it. But they're still forcing that you play go- garbage that nobody gives two shits about. And then they're doing that shit at E three where they're showing stuff that they know is not probably they know is probably not going to be that good looking in the game. And it's not true to the game and making it like, ooh, this is what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that. So I think that's all crap. You yeah. suck for that Ubisoft. And God, for God's sakes, get rid of you play. Nobody gives a shit. Well, you know, I mean, any publisher that's of a certain size is going to have a direct means of digital distribution. Because they don't want to pay 30% but don't to Steam. force us to use it. Yeah. But that's the I, thing. Then... That's the only like if you're they gonna, want they want all the, they want that thirty percent. If you're going to force us to use it, don't make it shit. How about that? That's I feel like a good meet in the middle is like all right, we got this thing you play, but we're going to make the games cheaper because they're on you play. So sell them on Steam with a thirty percent markup, and then sell them on yours for like fifteen twenty percent off. So you're incentivizing people, but not forcing people. Use incentives, mm-hmm. not like heavy handedness to do your business. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, true. it's, but I, you know, from the consumer standpoint, it's annoying yeah. because we're getting to that point again where I'm like, do I own that game? It's like, did I enter it on Origins or is it on Uplay or is it on Steam or is it on GOG or is it on uh, Gamefly or is it on like, we're getting back to that. Like, I don't want that. And I understand there's definitely a discussion to be had about, well, you also don't want Valve in total control either because that's bad. So I, and I agree with that. And I understand that, you know, kind of being hypocritical says, well, I want this, but I know it's bad. So it, it's a just separate discussion to be had. But anyway, regardless of all that, I've actually been quite enjoying Watch Dogs so yeah. far. Uh, I really like the hacking aspects. Like, you know, getting in a cert or like a chase and then trying to cause an accident so mm-hmm. that it blocks the cops or raising Raise up a drawbridge. The, yeah, she, like that. that's really cool. Like, I, I think that's really neat. And I've just really been enjoying it. I like, you know, scanning people and reading the various things about them. Yeah. And, you know, just the, the various side things that can just happen. Like you're walking around and like this lady gets mugged and you can just like chase the guy down and get rewarded for yeah. it. I think that kind of shit is like really cool. So I, I've really been, been liking it so far. There seems like there's a lot to do. There's a lot of mini games. There's Because I got to that point in the game where it was like, okay, well, here's like your progression stuff. And it's like, my God. It's like, yeah. I can see forever. Yeah. This huge graph of like, all right, here's all the different shit you can do. In the yeah, rewards. and then you pull out and there's like three more dimensions. Like, <laughs> oh my God, there's even more. <laughs> like the old Will Wright Spore presentation. Yeah. He kept zooming out, zooming out, zooming out. But, like, uh, so I definitely kind of get hit with that. Whoa, now I'm overwhelmed with stuff to do. But I've definitely been enjoying it a lot so far. So uh, definitely thumbs up on Watch Dogs to this point. Yeah, it's good. Um, I got, I'm got. i playing on the PS4. Oh, yeah? Because well, I'm a console peasant. You me. are a peasant. Yeah. I haven't played any PC games. I think the last PC game I was really into is Diablo 3, the expansion. Um, my, my, uh, my girlfriend Sarah is, like, level 150 paragon level now on that holy crap yeah i'm like what the so hell? when you hit the cap which is 70 right yeah are you paragon level zero and then you start building those paragon your paragon levels, levels account wide okay. okay so what's cool is like but if she do makes you gain any paragon levels and like as you're no getting normal levels no so okay so i probably haven't gotten any no. Uh, what's cool though is like if, like for example, she's Paragon level 150. She makes a new character. That character's level one, but Paragon level 150. So you have 150 Ooh. points to stat points to spend, and any like recipes and stuff you've picked up, yeah. you can use. And they took the item, the uh, level recs off rec- level requirements rather on gems. So you can use like these ridiculous <laughs> gems that's and these awesome. crappy armor, and you're like, well, that's a how god. you get through the insane levels. Like, well, yeah, and you can, like, pump it up to Torment, like, yeah. three at level one because you've got this crazy uh, yeah. access to this gear, and you can level up faster because of that. Yeah. I actually did try a new character with, like, no Paragon levels on Torment level, like, seven or six. I always think it's seven for some reason. And, like, even the intro zombies, the ones that don't fight back, 
they take like a minute and a half to oh kill. My gosh. <laughs> and like the first time you get to that right outside the gate and you actually have to kill stuff, uh-huh. I'd like kite around. Did you actually like I survive? finally was able to oh kill my them. Oh gosh. But and I didn't play too much longer on that Paragon level after yeah. that. It was just more of like a fun type yeah. to see how far I can push this type thing but it was pretty amusing how ridiculously hard those mm-hmm. first enemies were that game's really good now yeah they i love that they really fixed it up I'm, it's just good to see um somebody put in the time and effort to fix listen something. to the community and yeah. say this is what sucks about this and yeah. they go okay and because when it came out we're like yeah 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 you're gonna listen but this is a pretty major overhaul yeah you're not gonna do it and they did it they got rid of the auction house yep. like that's officially gone i'm now. wondering how they got Activision to like sign off on that. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like, like Activision would be like, no. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> no, they don't like it. We don't care. Like, I'm wondering what's next for that company. I mean, I know there's the WoW expansion that's coming up. Soon. Hearthstone is still pretty big. Yeah, pretty damn big actually. I just wonder um, if we're gonna hear something about Titan, whatever Titan. Is. I've just given up on that. Yeah. I'm like, I don't even care anymore. Like. You know what? I'm just going to turn out that Titan and Half Life Three are the same game. <laughs> it's a it's we've a collaborated with Valve. Yeah. It's like oh my Half Life Three colon Titan. <laughs> <laughs> the Half Life MMO. Yeah. But speaking of MMO, we're playing WildStar. Cool. Um, not a whole lot. It's all right if you're like kind of burnt out on MMOs. I don't feel like this is going to revitalize your love of it. Yeah. It's fun. I don't really like the Pixar style graphics. They've got, I mean, I've gotten used to them, and I still think the game looks okay, but, like, the, like, over-expressive faces and stuff gets really old to me. To me, I'm not really in the whole Pixar, like, kick. I mean, I think some of their movies are all right, yeah. but I'm not like, yeah, Pixar, yeah! <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Don't lie. You said those exact words yesterday. <laughs> I did. Yeah, Pixar! <laughs> and I just said it today. Yeah, exactly. I said it twice. But, yeah, yeah I feel it's... like every two or three years, I get the MMO. And it's like, I'll play an MMO, and then, like, I'm done for two or three years. I get it whenever there's a new one come out, and then sometimes I'll get an urge to go back. Uh, like, when, like sometimes I'm like, I want to go play WoW again, and I'll reactivate WoW, and I'll play it for, like, a month or two. And I'm like, mm, okay, like, I feel like... I saw some article about Final Fantasy XIV, and for a second I was like, uh, hey, so, <laughs> maybe play Final Fantasy XIV again. <laughs> I mean, why not? And you even like you but kind then, of reverted back to pre-puberty when you saw the article. Exactly. When I'm, whenever I'm wishy-washy, that's the voice I make in my head. <laughs> uh, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll get that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I I've actually wanted to go back to that mostly so I could chop trees down because I've I'm a sick person. Because <laughs> like like the, my last few weeks of Final Fantasy was was mostly cutting trees and grabbing shrubbery and shit. I'm like, what am I doing? Why do I like this? What's wrong with me that like this is a thing that I'm enjoying? Well, you know, there's the whole hunter-gather aspect of I know, guess. I mean, you're just a gatherer. I'm going back to my primitive yeah. days. Yeah. Like, Ooh, who must get berries <laughs> for woman in cave? It's like, yeah, it's, I guess that's what it's doing. But yeah, um, but yeah Wildstar is pretty fun so far. I think that's I think that's most of what I've been playing lately. Cool. What, what about you? Well, there's the the a deep descent into madness with retro games. Uh, um, playing a bunch of games, like, you know, I have that EverDrive now, so it's like, you start up the Nintendo or the Super Nintendo, and you have access to every game that's ever been made for those systems. And so I'll just, like, go through the menus and be like, I've never heard of that. Yeah, and just this. playing games blindly. And uh, sometimes it's stupid, sometimes it's fun. Um, like, I play this game called Uninvited, Yes, I love that game. Yes, I never heard of that. Yeah, it's the same guys who made like I think Shadowgate and Deja Vu. Okay, I knew about Shadowgate. Deja Vu? Did you play that one? I um no, I didn't. I'll check that one out. I like all those. I I started it and I was like, this is dumb. What is it? And I was like, this is kind of cool. I was getting into. So wait, which one did you say you you played Shadow? Are you uninvited? Uninvited. Yeah. Yeah, that seemed pretty cool. And I also um, have you heard of Little Samson? I think I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever played it. It's one of those games that's like, it's like $500. It's oh, super yeah. rare. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. Like, I can play it on the original system with the yeah. EverDrive, and I don't have to shell out 500 That game's really good. Like, uh, it's like a platformer, but you like can switch off between different like members in your party, and they have different abilities. Um, I, I've just been going back and just skipping through a lot of like Kid Icarus, Metroid, Excite uh, Bike. Yeah. 
you know, the Mario games, Castlevania, Contra. Konami had some really good music. Yeah. But I think they had some of the best. Sunsoft did too. Um, and do you, you know that, like, you know the whole thing about Konami and Ultra? Why they did that? Ultra. You remember Ultra? The Ultra label, like, Ninja Turtles came out under Ultra. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was Konami. But Nintendo had restrictions in place as to how many games you could release. Because they, they wanted to throttle the market. Uh, so Konami's like, well, fine. We'll make this other company called Ultra. So basically what you're but, saying, Nintendo's always been shitheads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, well, you, like, that's what's interesting about the Console Wars book is that after the home console crash in 83, because Atari flooded the market with just terrible crap, Nintendo, like, worked hard to come up with this formula of licensee restrictions and costs and seal of the nintendo seal of quality and uh lockout chips and all of these uh industry practices that have become the norm since nintendo um so nintendo you you also like back in the day for atari uh atari is like we made this system here's the specs for it go nuts you know and you could produce your own cartridges there was cartridges shaped all these different things you know but Nintendo's like, you have to buy the cartridges from us. You give us the code, we'll produce the cartridges. And Nintendo could choose the distribution of games at a given time. So if they wanted to boost up like sales on one game, they could tell these other publishers, like, yeah, well, here's the thing. We're going to make 500,000 Zeldas. We don't have enough chips for your games. Like, and so Nintendo was like ruthless. They just owned every aspect of the sales and distribution model of the nintendo well pissing off all the developers that couldn't possibly backfire right but the funny thing is like uh they viewed them as a necessary evil and that's like okay well we don't know what's best for us you're keeping us in check and it was kind of that way until sony was like hey look we're gonna put games on cds and it's gonna cost you a dollar to make them and um really low licensing costs and so people jumped onto the playstation so um and some of the biggest swings in industry leaders has been because, like, like have just been because of developer relations. Yeah. Not necessarily, like, I mean, it also has been about product quality, but, like, when you have a diverse library or diverse catalog on a system, that's when people really buy in. Yeah. And so you look at PlayStation 2. It's like 150 million PlayStation 2 sold. It's the, the the greatest selling console of all time. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, like Sony just got like just doing all these developer relations, and then they just burned so many bridges with the PS3. So <laughs> yeah, we stopped sucking by the PS4. It's interesting that Nintendo is still struggling with third party developers, which I don't think it's any holdover from before. Yeah. I think it's more of they're they're starting to play nicer, but their systems just aren't as. Yeah, there's this... they don't make good tools, and I think Sony I've heard makes good tools. And did you read Microsoft that... makes good tools? Did you read that report by the person who supposedly like was a developer of one of the first? He apparently is a port of a Wii U game, and he was talking about his experiences as a developer. Mm-hmm. That sounds developing. interesting, though. It, yeah, it's interesting because it's 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 like Nintendo definitely gives the impression of it just being a total clusterfuck over yeah. there, and that kind of reinforces that. Mm-hmm. Because it was basically like, yeah, you know, we would run into these bugs or you know, this very poor documentation, and we'd send a, a question to Nintendo, and it would take a week or two to get an oh, answer back. Man. And because it had to be translated, and then yeah. they'd have to answer the translation, but then sometimes they answer the wrong question because the translator screwed it up. So then you have yeah. to send the same question over. And so it was just a total, just a total clusterfuck. Yeah. Which, again, makes sense because it's Nintendo, and it seems like they just can't. It's like every time Nintendo something does something good, they end up doing something stupid. And it's yeah. like, come on. It's like, sometimes I want Nintendo just to fail. I just want them to go under sometimes. Because yeah. like, I kind of want to make an example of them because they're such fuck-ups. Yeah. But the other hand, like I grew up with Nintendo, so I kind of had that But special... they still have the ability to make good games. They do. And that's I think that's the thing. It's like, there's a nostalgia factor with Sega, but they have, they have Those guys clearly scumbags. just said... We don't know how to. We don't know how to do this anymore. We used to be able to make fun games. We don't know how to do it. And they're anymore. just assholes. Yeah, Nintendo can at least has talent 
that like they, is yeah. still making good games. They're they like do. the they're like Japan's Disney. Like <laughs> they're just like one of those things. They make these endearing characters. Except the stuff they, they have, make is actually they do good. shitty things. But oh. they, yeah, like Nintendo and Disney both are shitty companies. Like yeah, oh yeah, God. Yes. Um, just in terms of like what they do and their like. Yeah, their business practices. I'd say Disney was worse, but yeah. Nintendo is more or less evil and more stupid. Like and out of touch. Yeah, yeah. Like they just don't understand like They used to be just as evil and oh, not yeah. as stupid. Yeah, they're now they're less evil and more stupid. Yeah. Because they just just they don't know what the hell's going but on. But they they have uh, a sincerity to them now that's like we really want to fix it. Like and so I think that goes some somewhere. of them have that sincerity. I but like, like I feel like the America people behind the scenes that. Like the people behind the scenes, like yeah. the executives that we don't see a lot. Yeah. I think those are the ones who are the fuck ups. I think Nintendo like... of America really wants that company to be better, and they're held back by a yeah. lot oh, of yeah. Japanese executives. I don't doubt that, like, for a second. Uh, I mean, despite the bullshit that Reggie was spewing, which yeah. I'm sure, like, he probably was a. He wasn't probably told, don't you ever say that it can't handle it because of the specs. Yeah. Don't ever say that because they got so much shit about it. So, you know, maybe that's the whole. But, I mean. The fact that he slid, like I just can't make it any better. But it, yeah. but you know, speaking of Nintendo being completely out of touch with the internet and shit, I want to talk about briefly what a clusterfuck setting up the Wii U was. <laughs> because <laughs> I bet I want to hear this. All right, so <laughs> I'm thinking. All right, I have a Wii. I bought a few Virtual Console games on it. Um, I want to log in, get that set up, so I can download my virtual console games. These are games. such cute assumptions. I know. <laughs> I'm so like, I mean, it's not like there's a precedence of that with every other system right, ever. Right, right, right. Uh, I, I was totally out of, I was out of line thinking I could do this. Mm-hmm. So I sign up. I mean, I, cr- I, and it's like, oh, you needed this this um, Club Nintendo ID, and I'm like, oh, I think I'm pretty sure I have that. So I tried as like, nope, there's no nothing on file with that email. I'm like. But, but I'm like, well, wait, I'm registered by Wii U. I was like, well, F it. I'm going to make a Club Nintendo account. So I make a Club Nintendo account. I register that on the Wii U. And then I go to do something on the Wii U, and it's like, oh, you need a, you need a, an account to do that. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me sign in. So I go to sign in, and it's like, well, no, that's, you don't have an account. I'm like, what? And then, and, I, and to be honest, I was kind of flipping through, so I didn't read everything. But then I noticed it said, this is not your Club Nintendo account. This is your Nintendo Network account. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? They have two separate accounts, like online yeah. accounts. There's Club Nintendo and there's Nintendo Network. What's the difference? Shit if I know or care. Yeah. It's like, so you have to set the two up, but then you can link them together, but then you can only have one console per Club Nintendo. Okay, I don't know. It's a, it's a complete it's fucking so mess. Up. So then I'm like, I finally get all that shit set up. And I'm like, all right, now where do I go to download my virtual console games? I'm looking, I can't find it anywhere. And I'm like... And I also had hooked my up my Wii up for other reasons I can't recall. And I remembered I had like credits on my Wii account. I guess I had put like ten dollars in or something at some point to buy virtual console games, and I never did it. So I'm like, well, where's my credits? So I look online, and oh god, it was hilarious because like there's an official YouTube video from Nintendo. They found YouTube somehow, <laughs> um, and there was like, this is the easy way to transfer your Wii your con- virtual console games from Wii to Wii U. You just need a cable, an SD card. And da, 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 da. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. And like, it's like, oh, put the SD card in, download this free app, install, I'll do all this. Oh, by the way, once you take the virtual console games off, you can never put them back on your Wii again. It's like, oh my fucking god! It's like, seriously, you guys are just completely fucking oblivious to how this shit should work yep it's like mind-blowing that it's they are this after doing steam and like i mean granted i guess ps4 and xbox one don't really have like i can't download a ps3 game or whatever but the shit's still tied to my account right so if i my ps3 explodes and i buy a new one i can just go download my game you log in it's there yeah but with nintendo it's more like it's tied to the hardware Mm -hmm. because i've heard people saying like if their Wii U broke or something, and they want to get their virtual console games, it was like a total nightmare to yeah. get them. I've heard of horror stories where Nintendo's like, well, hold on just a second. And then the customer service person comes back and says, all right, if you mail us the Wii, we'll put your games on it. It's like, what? They, like, do you know that there's this decentralized network of computers that we can transfer <laughs> files with? Like, why am I putting a device into a truck and it drives to you like so you can put files on it It, like 
It's, it's so stupid. It's absolutely dumbfounding yeah. how out of touch and how they just like they're so behind. And the like funny we thing joke is, about it, we joke about yeah. it. But then I, when I was setting the Wii U up, I, was, I, I mean, I was still surprised to see it like in action. Like you hear yeah. these stories, but then when I saw it myself, it got two different network that you can't use together and then they I have had the to same crap it. on my 3ds like you just set it up and it's like you're this is your nintendo network id and then it's like all right club, log in with your club nintendo this is not your nintendo network id i was like what like and i was so it just took forever for it to work and it was on christmas day so the uh. network was just totally borked it's just insane like and the funny thing is is they they're their intent on all these restrictions is to prevent piracy. But the Wii is one of the most exploited systems there is. Like, <laughs> Ironically. You, yes. You can literally like run a tool, hook up an external hard drive to it, and have every Wii game ever. Like, I think the harder a company tries to make their game like piracy free the more determined pirates yeah, are like exactly. well, yeah well, the fuck. more resolved like they, they see get. it as a challenge and yeah. they're like they want the prestige like we were the one to crack this yeah and so i think they're pushed more which i could totally see that like i see that as a challenge mm-hmm. like because they like a lot of these people these these like hackers or, or these actual hackers and, and piraters and whatnot i think a lot probably for them the the challenge is a lot of it like they enjoy like being the first to crack yeah. that difficult code or whatever, and I can totally understand that, not condoning it or whatever, but I'm just saying I can yeah. understand that. So yeah, it's just Nintendo just has they need to get rid of these people who have this 1980s, 1990s mentality. It's yeah. like it's 2014, guys. You need to get the fuck out of here. Well, the weird thing is they have an army of engineers that are writing this code. They're writing tons of code and they're writing all this stuff. It's just really their architecture and design is so half baked. It's like stop and think th- think things through. Like I don't know what it is about like and I'm not trying to be like oh it's just racism. Yeah, I'm not trying to like I, say I think anything. but I feel like when it comes to American internet developers, like America's pretty good at the internet. Like yeah. when it comes to web services and scalable web architecture and uh you know all of these different things it takes to make uh, a network for gamers to play these games and track entitlements to these games and everything. America's doing good, but I don't, I'm not saying anything bad about the race of Japanese people. I'm just saying the industry of the Japanese internet. It's just that culture. Behind. It's just their culture. It seems to be, and it's it's changing a little bit. Uh, but I mean, I think that's pretty well known at this point. That other than the people who are just going to be offended anyway. Yeah. I think people understand that. There's just this Japanese culture that has, like, held them back because they're like, this is the way we do things and we're not Mm going to change. And everybody else is like, oh, this works way better, so we're going to do this. So especially when that happens and you have to go, just like my experience with having to do the Wii U shit. And with, like, Steam, again, my computer can come, I can reinstall Windows. Okay, I'm getting my games. Boom. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, oh, well, you have to activate. You have to call. You have to send the CD in. There's just nope. Download Steam. Pick what games I want to reinstall. Boom, I'm done. Like, can you imagine if Nintendo and Valve partnered, <laughs> and so that v- Valve is like, all right, we're gonna just do all the back end. We're gonna make Steam like Nintendo, Nintendo Steam, and <laughs> we'll handle all the software entitlement, all the security, all the player management, all the leaderboards, all that crap. All right, you guys just go. You make great you games. Can, you can make the system. You can make the games. You can come up with whatever crazy controller like you want to, whatever. But just leave the internet crap to us. And like, because you guys don't get it. That would be awesome. I'd love that. Like, I mean, that would never happen. That no, will never happen. It's definitely in yes. the realm of never ever yes, happen. Yes. But yes, I I totally agree. And it's Across a shame because a million lighthouses and a million dimensions. That's never happened. And the thing is, it's a shame because. Obviously, Nintendo has some amazing designers and developers working there. They know how to make damn good games. Yeah. And they're held back by these old rules, this old guard who wants to do things a certain way. Or, not even that, they just see like, oh, we'll just get it working. That's good enough. Like, two yeah. accounts? I don't see a problem with that. Like, 
it's like they it's people who've never actually used these systems ever yeah and they're just like yeah i don't see the problem it's just two different logins so you can make the same user and password it's fine and of all the experiences of all the use cases and like workflows that you want to perfect the first out of box experience should be like your most well rehearsed and well understood like like process yeah and for every nintendo system that connects to the internet it's been shit oh yeah it's been awful it's been just painful hey man it's getting worse and worse and what's your what's your we friend code oh it's one two seven six five three it's It's easy just give your 16 digit code to a friend and then get his 16 (laughs) digit and both of you type them in like morons and then you can connect on the internet it's like the it crowd it's like the the emergency phone number just dial (laughs) one eight seven six five eight seven three (laughs) one one. fire Uh, fire fire uh but uh yeah nintendo we we hate you and we love you nintendo mostly hate but we want to love you help us love you you make it so difficult and and another thing is i really wish this is probably not a popular opinion but i would love to see a subscription service with all virtual console titles on like eight dollars a month ten dollars a month and i have access to everything you've ever made Uh, you know just nintendo software not like yeah um that would be cool i'd like that won't happen but yeah i I agree yeah i think that would be great but like you want to talk (laughs) for classic games exactly yeah yeah so you want to talk about the the certain that small little expo that went down here yeah the um, electronics three yes yes e e cubed e e cubed is what they call it but uh, yeah there's uh it was a lot it was a good e3 it was a damn good e3 yeah it's funny because like this is the the first e3 outside of like new hardware e3 where we're talking about consoles it's the first one where it's like you know we're only talking about games at this point and neither the xbox one or ps4 have really hit their stride yet like there's no games that are like system sellers yeah that are like yeah this is why you get it you know um for those two but the wii u is starting to come into that phase where it's like they've been going for a year and so this is really this is their moment they have to capitalize as much as they can because next year i imagine ps4 and xbox one's holiday they're gonna have some pretty uncharted good releases yeah yeah. like and they're gonna have games that really want you to buy the system but smash brothers and mario kart 8 are gonna sell a lot of wii u's this year and you have the new Zelda coming out, Hyrule Warriors, that Bayonetta new, 2. I, I'll tell you what, I think that new Zelda's not coming out until 2016. Oh, really? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I guess I'm talking about, not necessarily this year, I just mean in the, the near future. The concept exists, yeah. Right. So I, I think, I, I guess I mean in the near future, yeah. we'll see more, which I guess next year isn't necessarily near future, depending on how I look at it. But regardless, yeah, I think they're starting to get enough games now, exclusive, where it's like, okay, yeah. Now I can justify. Yeah. Well, even Mario Kart 8 increased Wii Wii U sales by like 600% or something insane. Which is is great because like, I don't know. I love I love to see like people buying stuff. I don't know, just like uh somebody succeeding cuz like I hate when fanboys are like don't want the other side to win or whatever. Like it's like it's good for everybody to be successful in yeah. this space. I mean, I want Nintendo to fail sometimes. I I want them to fail if they won't change. Yeah. If they change, then I want them to succeed. But I kind of want <laughs> the vindictive part of me wants. If they continue down this road, I want to see them like crash yeah. and burn. But I would, if I had a choice, I'd rather than just go, "Hey, the internet. This seems cool. Let's look into how this works," yeah. and and actually get their shit together. Or you know what? Like, I don't know. Like, acquire some company that's like really good. At, like uh, Raptor. What if Nintendo acquired Raptor? Like, interesting choice. Raptor has the ability to build like player communities and yeah. they have all this network stuff. And it's like if they just acquired the, the engineers at Raptor and said like we want you to build our like system, yeah, they could. And Nintendo has ten billion dollars in the bank. Yeah, ten billion dollars. Like if you can't figure it out, acquire a company that knows how to yeah. do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, Facebook. Nintendo well, buys Facebook. Yes. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Actually, I don't know why. Like we that. just bought Facebook so we could get Oculus Rift. That's all yeah, that's the only reason we got um, it. Mario and first person. 
But yeah, it's. I think. I, well, I think all three companies had a really good E three showing. Like, I don't yeah, really yeah. feel like any of them were like, oh, they no, were terrible. Nobody or, got showed up. Uh, I, I think. You know, I didn't get a. I didn't get to actually listen to or watch the Microsoft press conference. I got to watch the Sony press conference. And it sounded like they both did a really good job of just game, game, yeah. game, game. Like Nintendo or Sony did do a little bit of like interspersing of here's some non game stuff. Yeah, they did that but, comic book thing and like Yeah, that I nobody don't know. gave a shit about. Yeah. It's funny. They still are It's one of those things it's like <clears throat> maybe announce that in a press release, but until we see it, yeah. we don't really give a shit because it probably isn't gonna be any good. Well maybe I think what being... happens is like Sony is made up of like 10 different companies like yeah. they're so bad about being separate that like sony picture studios or sony whatever is like hey can we just put in a little bit of space yeah. there just you know towards the end just let us talk yeah and so i think they're just like fine whatever <laughs> um which sony as a company is having some pretty serious problems uh i don't know if you've heard about Mm-mm. um People throwing stuff at Kaz Harai at shareholders meetings. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Because, you know, Kaz Harai is now, like, the CEO of Sony. Like, he's oh, Sony he? proper. Wait, um, wasn't he the guy who fucked up last time? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's how things work in Japan. Uh, Fuck up bad enough. Japan. Can, try move corporate up the ladder. Corporate period. Like, yeah. America, come on. It's like, well, we can't fire you, but so we're going to promote you. I think right now the... PlayStation division is the only one that's like pretty that's doing well. Like they're hemorrhaging money from. So it's like TV he fucked up Sony the PS3. Pictures. So surely he should run our company as exactly. a whole. Exactly. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It's funny because like whenever things go wrong for a Japanese company at like a shareholders meeting, there's like bowing and like yeah, oh, you know, they're so so apologetic and they're just, they're shamed. You know, it's like, but it's like. I don't know. Like, just stop screwing. Maybe up. don't be stubborn. Like, yeah, like, yeah. It's, I mean, you won't even. It's we don't so want weird. you to fucking apologize. We want to stop fucking up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I. Oh, Do you remember the when Sony's network got hacked? Yeah. The bow. Yeah. <laughs> they bowed for like a minute, like <laughs> sixty seconds, like a whole row of executives bowing. Got to love for sixty seconds. It's just weird. Yeah. It's so weird. Um. But anyway, yeah. So let's talk about some of the games. Uh, let's see. Well, first, Batman Arkham Knight. I don't think I can be any more hyped. That thing looks awesome. Like that looks so cool. But it's it's so it sucks that it was delayed. Like, yeah. But it's I good. Mean, I mean, it's good for the game. I think it's good that I can't remember when games are supposed to come out because when they're <laughs> delayed, I'm like, oh, that was supposed to come out this year. So I was like, to me, it's not even like I think oh, it was hit. probably my number one like holiday release. Like it was the one I was looking forward to the most. Um, and I was like, crap, you know. But there's, then you look at the release schedule, and it's like, I would have never had. It's good. <laughs> like, I'm gonna be so busy. There's so many games coming out. Yeah, well, that's the way it always is. They always days. stack it towards the end. But yeah, Arkham Knight, like Rocksteady's back in control. Yeah, and I'm very, like, very hyped because you get been to the drive. First, the two Batman games have been really good. Yeah. Um, I actually do want to try Origins to give it a fair shake. But at the same time, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to support them because they're such shit bags. Yeah. Because like, because you heard about that whole thing where they're like, "Yeah, there's some major bugs. We're not going to fix them." Mm-hmm. It's it like, is... wow, you guys are fucking. Pieces I'm of wondering shit. if it just has something to do with the way their their uh, contract is set up to do that game. Oh, like, I don't doubt that. They I'm probably sure WB don't get any money for it, and it's not their IP, and so they're like. Why would we do I mean, it? Probably, like, I mean, it's probably WB related too. It's yeah. probably them just being dickheads. And I'm getting yeah. Rocksteady probably has a lot more pull. It's like, look, we've yeah. made you two stellar games that yeah, sold like exactly. hotcakes. You're going to give us a little bit more leniency. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. but it's just a- don't ever buy the off-year game of an annualized property. Just don't. I don't know. Yeah. Teach like publishers that they need to not do that. Like... Because there's the only always way they're an learn. off-year COD, and there's always an off-year Assassin's Creed. And... Well, that's the problem, is like you got to just stop buying those games. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Like If you buy the good one, then at least they know, like, we're making money when this developer makes it. Like, we Well, just... buy the good ones. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Buy the good ones, just don't buy that, the shitty yeah, ones. Don't buy the shitty ones. It's like complaining about Hollywood shitting out bad movies, and then you go watch Transformers 4. I mean, it's like, well... Man. 
Man, he is awful. He's a terrible person. Anyway, but yeah, Arkham Knight, totally hyped. Yep, looks badass. I, yeah. Gonna get I that one. Super hyped. Mortal Kombat X, talk briefly about this one. There wasn't a whole lot shown. Yeah, it was mostly a CGI trailer, which... Well, they did show some game. There's some gameplay yeah, videos, too. there is some game, but I'm really... I was really disappointed by how many CGI trailers there were. Mm. Like, there was a bunch of games that didn't show gameplay. Yeah. And it's just like, what's the point? Like... You could have just announced like because hey, it works. Because yeah. how many? Remember when the order was first shown, yeah. and people were like, "That game looks great." It's like, what? There was yeah. like zero gameplay shown. Zero. It was just like CGI trailers. Like I thought the setting looked cool, but like I know zero about the game because they just showed a trailer. I don't think they talked about what kind of game it was. I'm like, they should just have live action trailers. <laughs> That'd be <laughs> awesome, like, man. Those graphics look amazing. I want to see a Mortal Kombat live action trailer. Well, they have that whole live action yeah, series. Yeah, like a web series. Believe it or not, I haven't watched it. I'm a big. I like Mortal Kombat. I've heard it's good. I, yeah, I think I might have seen yeah. one of them, but I love Mortal Kombat. I'm I'm pretty excited about Mortal Kombat X Ten yeah, X, whatever you call it. I was um, calling it X because it sounds yeah, cooler. Because Injustice was awesome. I love Injustice. And I just bought Injustice on PC. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Like, and I don't know. Like, it, it's not like a game that I would like. Harold is like, look at how like perfect this fighting game is, but it's just a fun fighting game. Yeah. The presentation, the the progression of the story mode, uh, the specials are just just dumb. And, and I've insane. heard the story is really it. good. Like yeah. it's really interesting. That's cool. And I just I, I, I I'm definitely gonna get this one when it comes out, like day one. My concern is that they have a very bad rep as far as their net code especially on pc yeah uh, because both mortal kombat 9 and injustice had really shitty net code on the pc and, and i think they're I just don't play any fighting I games think on they're, the pc i don't know well i think their net code in general is not very good yeah. but I, I think that on pc in particular they're really shitty i'm and probably gonna get this for the ps if i got it for yes now that the ps4 controller is out i would maybe get it on the ps4 because God knows the 360 controller is, or the D, D-pad on the 360 is total shit. Like, because they released Street Fighter 4 uh, Arcade Edition on the gold, Xbox Gold. Yeah. And I was all excited, and then I downloaded it on Xbox 360, and I was like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. This D-pad is total garbage. Uh, Did you order a fight stick? No. Oh, man. I'm held off. Because I'd already bought a Wii U and, like, $80 worth of Steam games and yeah. Mario Kart. I'm like, okay, I'm going a little crazy here. I need to, like, relax. Skip a meal or two, you know. I, yeah. Go hungry. I've been taking my lunch to work, so. But, yeah, Mortal Kombat X, I'll be interested. I really yeah. hope that they, they make the net code good. But I feel like Mortal Kombat 9, I kind of feel like they threw it out there and they made some updates. But I feel like they were just they they were like eh all yeah. right we did enough let's go to injustice injustice now. they did a really good job with balancing and like I mean it's gonna be at Evo this year like they really yeah. have shown that they care about it being a, a tournament quality fighting game and I really enjoy watching actually uh, probably um, uh, oh god what is it called the game we were just talking about uh, injustice injustice, injustice. Yeah. wow my brain memory is amazing. Injustice is probably one of my favorite games, fighting games to watch. Yeah, probably the f- mo- game I enjoy watching the most. So a, a lot of the, um, I guess, strategic elements of meters and like, yeah. um, what's the term for it? Like the, like when you make a bet or whatever. Oh, uh, the um, clash. Yeah, clash. The clash. Uh, it's just so cinematic and it's yeah. perfect for watching. Like, yeah. So because you, you can actually see what, like the other person's thinking and like make the decisions they make. Right. Whereas, Should I use meter for clash? Mm-hmm. Should I wait? And then, like, when the person's getting low on health, you can see they're intentionally trying to avoid combos. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that. I think it makes it interesting. And a lot of the the deeper strategy in Street Fighter Four is a little harder to follow sometimes. Yeah. Um, this is sometimes it happens, and the announcers call it out, and then you realize what happened, but it, you didn't yeah, <laughs> see you did it that. as it was happening. It's like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, I'm interested in Mortal Kombat X. Uh, that looks pretty pretty nifty. I'll probably get it just because I'm a Mortal Kombat fan. I have been since the first one. So yeah, uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. First off, my or AKA Dragon Age Three. My expectations are low uh, because okay. Dragon Age Two was such a huge disappointment. Yeah, and obviously just the cash in. So is this 
Bioware or Bioware. Montreal, I think this is real or? Bioware. So I think Montreal is the real Bioware, right? Okay, I think so. Uh, and it's supposed to be like open world and all this yeah, stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I have. Is that going to be just lessons? PC or is it going to be console PC? I assume it'll be consoles because the other one, well, at least Dragon Age Two was console as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but and there was speculation that's part of the reason why the second one sucked. But I think it was just a cash in, frankly. Well, the, the the turnaround time was just so quick on it. It was. I mean, and well, just, you, didn't, you didn't play that one, right? Good. No, I didn't. The, I mean, there was a lot of problems with it, but two of the major problems with that game was recycled areas. Mm-hmm. Like, it it was really, really bad. It really felt like an indie studio type thing. Yeah. Because, for example, you would get this mission, go to this warehouse and, and do this thing. So you go in this warehouse and some, like, you'd come in from the west side and, like, some doors you couldn't get into, they were locked or whatever, and you make your progress through, you need to do the dungeon, whatever, you finish. Later on, it's like, oh, go to this this uh, building and clear it out of the bandits or whatever it is. Mm. So now you come in the east side. It's the same exact map. Same exact map. But you come in from the east side. And those doors that were locked now are open. But then some doors that were open are now locked. Like, it was really bad. That's and like, so and this happened multiple times. Yeah. You would be in the same exact area. And that's like, what I mean. They, just, they, they spit it out as fast as they could. Yeah. And so they didn't even have artists who churn out, like... Uh, a lot of different levels. And then there's a parachuting enemies was the other huge problem. Because, like, and it became so predictable. Like, you would kill the wave of enemies in an encounter. Mm-hmm. And then enemies would literally drop out of the sky. Uh, and a lot of times they try to hide it by making mm-hmm. him, like, far away from the main fight. But if you have casters, a lot of times you have the caster, like, way back. So you have enemies drop out of the sky on top of, like, your casters and stuff. And on hard difficulty, that could kill you very yeah. quickly so you actually had to plan around enemies dropping from the sky no matter where you were if you're outside or in a cave or wherever you were it was just so terrible yeah. like this is like i mean not saying that indies lower quality but this is like this is the type of thing it's like well our resources are limited so we're just going to do it this way like just like the reusing the reusing if i saw that reusing warehouse thing in some indie studio they had like 10 people I'd be much more inclined to go. It kind of sucks they did this, but I can understand. Yeah, because it's it's kind of a like this is the way it had to be for you, right? Like, for money reasons yeah. and stuff. So you know, I I don't like it, but I can kind of trudge along. This is fucking Bioware. Yeah, that studio can afford to just yeah pump like they did after this, pump the brakes, and we're gonna take a couple years to make something good. Right, and it, it was just such a huge disappointment. Yeah. And, what it could have been if you took it alone and said, okay, ignore everything else, forget who made it. Was this RPG fun? It was pretty fun. It wasn't. It definitely yeah. wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination. I think I would probably it, ignoring the Bioware, ignoring what it should have been. I'd probably give that game about a six because it was better than average. That's I guess and it was fun enough. Okay, because I, I feel like hearing most people, they, it sounds like a four to me. Like, if I factor in the fact of what it should have been, the fact okay. it was Bioware, yeah. I'd probably put it about a four. Yeah, um, because it. It did end up being more frustrating because yeah. I ended up having the meta game because of like the enemies dropping out of the sky and other yeah. stupid bullshit like that. So, so if I haven't played any Dragon Age, skip it. Entirely. So I can just go straight to Inquisition. Yeah, play okay. Origins and whatever that DLC was that I haven't played yet. So play Origins. And oh, play absolutely. Okay. Origins was great. Like that's yeah. why two is so much worse because Origins was so damn good. Yeah. And then, or like the second one was just. Poop. So, do I have to play Origins on Origin? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Actually, no. You can buy. Well, you can get it on Steam. I don't know if they force you to use Origin to launch yeah. it or not. Uh, EA has been pretty good about that. I think for the most part. Like, yeah. I think that. Well, their newer games you have to buy an Origin, but even the older ones, I don't think you have to launch Origin to play them. But because um, I might have bought some Sims DLC uh, here recently, I don't want to talk about Terrible. it. But um, but yeah, so yeah, Dragon Age Inquisition. I look at it and I look at the stuff and I'm like, that looks cool. But then I'm like, oh right, Dragon Age. Yeah. So that's definitely going to be a game I'm going to wait for actual people to review. Because if you go back and look at the reviews, like for Dragon Age Two, people are giving that shit like an eight, a seven and a half, an eight. And I'm like, what so game even did then, you play? How would you, I guess, like going back in time, knowing now what you are knowing. Knowing what I know yes. now? Knowing what you know now, if you knew it then, would you have bought Dragon Age 2? 
Yes, so I could bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> so you because, so you did derive a lot of pleasure from that. <laughs> yes. I guess the unintentional pleasure of yes. bashing it. Yes. Uh, it's one of those things where like as being like kind of wanting to be out there in the community, having the podcast, right, having the right. channel. You need to I want to play it but like guess, colonial like theoretically colonial think of it as like you're just an isolated gamer. You don't have I was just this... a gamer, no. I okay. would I would have told myself not to buy it. Not even on sale. Not even for like five dollars. So I but how would you know that if you know these reviews were coming out that there were eight, how could you make an informed decision that you shouldn't get it? Listen to actual player that's why I said that when but Dragon they lag Age... behind by like two weeks, right? Because it takes these days. A, really. Not I these feel days. like it takes a while because to get the, through the game and see the big all the guys problems. like Total Biscuit and Northern Lion and people like that. They'll usually get the big games, like especially if it's something like this, yeah. like an RPG, a big RPG. Sometimes they'll get it enough time that they can play at least enough to get an idea of okay is this game going to be any good or not because they don't do reviews yeah. per se they do they'll play like a couple hours of it and then go okay now let me give you kind of an first impressions type of look, which is what i so do. really the fact that they gave it eights is more a statement on the laziness of the big outlets like they just they they looked at it at a cursory glance and they thought hey it looks like another dragon age eight i honestly can't I mean, obviously, there's the, oh, they're getting paid off by EA, so they're giving me a ratings thing. I don't even want to comment on that. It's just I like, don't think that happens, but... I don't, I don't know what they were thinking, because in no world is that game an A. Even as an indie game, even if you ignore its Bioware, even if you ignore all the money that went into it, if you ignore all that and just take it on its own merits, no way was that game an A. Absolutely, yeah. like, no way. Like, I just cannot see it being an 8. And I just cannot possibly respect any outlet that would give that shit an 8. It would be like that, that one magazine or that one site that gave Colonial Marines like a 9. It's like... <laughs> Somebody did? Yeah. They gave like an 8.5 or a 9 or something insane. Uh, oh, and they got man. totally blasted on it, too. And That's the thing, though. It's like, if you're going to go through the process of like, we're going to put numbers against games like well maybe just put some thought into it and really do it not like just well, assume like eh, i'm definitely happens. not on that train of let's get rid of numbers because no I think i'm not saying that right i'm just saying if you're going to declare yourself to be an objective outlet to rate things then do it like i, I feel like that must have been born I mean, out of somebody who looked at it at a at a cursory glance the graphics look good i played it a little while sure eight and a half yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, that's not to say it's impossible this person liked it. It's near impossible that he liked it that much. Like, I, if you I played but the I whole question game, this you'd see how broken it was. Yeah. And okay. it is not in any way capable of an 8. It's one of those things because I played that. We, I played. <laughs> I hated that. I did not like that game. I played through the damn thing twice. Uh, I played it once solo and I played once with a friend of mine. We did it co op. And the thing, the funny thing is, my friend, he was like, oh, I don't think it was that bad. I'm like, we played it co op. Like, any game you play co-op is automatically going to be improved by probably, like, two points. Yeah, because, so. like, you're, in addition to the game you're having, you're just having a social experience. I mean, like, right. I have very fond memories of Resident Evil 5, so that should tell you yeah. <laughs> how much <laughs> how uh, co-op experience can, yeah. can make a game better. Uh, I need to, yeah, I need to go back and play 6. I need to have a Resident Evil marathon. That's what I need to do. Mm. I, um... Resident Evil. Yeah, they yeah, do that. Or, or Biohazard, if you want to be cool and call it Biohazard. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to call yeah. it Biohazard. But uh, next is uh, Grim Blood Souls. Fanged... Oh, Blood oh, wait. Souls? No, Grim Fandango. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Well, just, there's not really a whole lot to say here, I guess. But yeah, they're making an AC remake of Grim Fandango, one of the best adventure games I've ever played. I'm excited because I've never played it. And now I get to wait and play it that way for the first time. I think that's cool. I think it's cool for both because there's people who've heard about it and just never got the chance to play it. Yeah. And there's people who have and get to play it again, but yeah. it lo- it'll look better, mm-hmm. which, you know, I think it looks okay given the time. But, uh, but yeah, like I'm totally looking forward to that. That was an amazing adventure game. It had some great dialogue, just really funny ass dialogue in it. Yeah. So that's going to be good. Apparently one of the, um, like, uh, one of the people I follow on Twitter that I'm kind of a fan of is uh, Frank Cafaldi. He's mm-hmm. like a big video game preservation guy. Like he collects just tons of crap and like takes care of it and he like does all this research on games. Anyway, he had a, a lot of original Grim Fandango concept art. 
Oh, and nice. they contacted him like, "Can we scan it? We want it in the game." And oh, stuff. sweet! So it sounds like they're giving it a really good treatment. That's good. That's like, a good sign. Uh, I, that's really good to hear because that game deserves it. It was yeah. it was just really really good. I really that game had a really interesting feature too. I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but it actually recorded the dialogue into it like a like a text file or into a file like it was an HTML file. So you uh-huh. can open it up as a web browser. So you just go back and read the text. <laughs> so you could actually read through your choices and the responses. <laughs> that's awesome. It was just a random ass yeah. like, feature that and I and it's thought like was why cool. not? It's really easy to do. Yeah. But yeah, Grim Fandango. Looking forward to that. Next is Bloodborne. Blood Souls. Blood Souls. Bloody uh, Souls. I really like the aesthetics. I really like that look. It looks look. pretty uh, distinctive. I like it. Yeah, I, I like that whole like gothic horror look. Yeah. Like, and I'd love to see more games in that vein. And I love Dark Souls, and I'm really liking Dark Souls 2. Mm-hmm. So I'm definitely very intrigued to find out how this is going to go. I've heard they're focusing this more on offense. Because in Dark Souls 2, it's... It, well, I mean, obviously, if you're really good, it's, this is not the case. But when you're first starting out, you tend to be very defensive mm-hmm. and react to based on, you know, you block the enemy's attack and then you hit them or you try to parry around them when they miss and things like that. Uh, but in this game, I think, is going to be more you are on the offensive, yeah. uh, which is what just what I've heard. So I'll be very interested to see so how that same developer, out. right? Yeah, from, from software. And same, I guess, artist as demon souls I, yeah i think the director from demon souls or okay. whatever is doing miyazaki. this game yeah but I not the not miyazaki gonna, i don't know names i saw miyazaki and i was like what and i was like oh it's not the miyazaki who is that you know like the wh- who's howl's moving castle i don't that? know oh the, i'm not seeing it you know the um studio ghibli uh animes uh nope you're you're mm-hmm. you're going down that nerd road Spirited that I'm away. not familiar with. I mean, those are words that I've heard together. I, I feel like he's like the most famous like artist. I mean, not to say I'm against anime. I mean, I, but I'm not an anime person. Like, yeah. I love Berserk. I love Ninja like, Scroll. Uh, I'm it like, came from the same studio that did Nino Kuni. Oh, that's Studio Ghibli. That's another game I've heard of, and probably I don't think I've seen any even screenshots. All right, well, I think Sorry. that guy's name I'll is some Miyazaki, cred. and then I Ethan. saw Miyazaki, and I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're different people, as, yeah, far, as, yeah, as far as I know. Because <laughs> um, Studio Ghibli is all, like, bright and happy. And oh, yeah. It's just, I was like, what? My brain was, like, imploding. This is what's really going on in my yeah. head when I'm doing all these happy type stuff. So yeah, not a lot of info. There's been some like leaked gameplay footage, and yeah. it looks pretty cool. But definitely, very much looking for the forward to that. A uh, little Big Planet Three. You'll probably have more to say about this one. Yeah, cause... I'm kind of. I have very mixed feelings about this. Um, I really want to play another Little Big Planet because me, it's it's a game like me and Sarah can play. We have a good time. My wife, Sarah, not your girlfriend. Sarah. Right. Yeah. I was um, about to say. Wait yeah. a minute. Hold on. Let's turn the recording <laughs> off. And. Um, we and it's really cool that they're adding these new characters with new abilities, you know. Uh, but it's not made by uh, Media Molecule. Really, it's made by some other like uh, kind of gun for hire. Um, but I think they did Little Big Planet for the Vita. Hmm. I don't remember. Was that any good? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you'd yeah. heard of reviews. I don't remember. Um, but. Uh, I think I think it'll be good, and I think it's really cool that they're making it so that all of the all of the little big planet content that exists will be playable on it. Oh. Like that's cool. People that made levels in one and two can automatically play it. Because so. I I mean I never got into the whole little bit big planet thing. Like I tried the first one, like the demo with the first one a few times, and I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. at all. Well, it's but... very floaty jumping. And yeah. we grew up playing Mario jumping. Yeah. <laughs> and when you get used to like fast, precise jumping, this just floaty, slow jumping is really yeah. uh, hard to get used to. Um, but yeah, like it's it's just a fun co op game. I mean, we almost, <laughs> it's funny, we never finished either of them, but we got like 80% of the way through. <laughs> and we just stopped playing. I don't know. So, uh, but I'm, I'm, I might get that. I don't know. I'm just going to wait and see. But the, the, the different abilities opens up the potential for well-designed levels because the problem with the, I guess, uh, scaled-down ability set of 1 and 2 
is that the level design can only do so much. Yeah. Like, you can jump and you can hang on to things. Yeah. Uh, there were jet packs, I think, in the second. And that could increase, but they didn't seem to leverage those very much. And so I'm really curious to see how the level design uh, works out. And the thing is, the, the campaign has usually not been like, a, that, there hasn't been a lot of thought poured into the campaign. Yeah. It's usually just been about a tool set that people can use to make levels. Yeah. And I've played a lot of the like community created levels, but usually they're, they're not like amazing experiences. They're just kind of like, Oh, that's cool that you made this ghostbusters inspired thing. <laughs> like that's kind of neat. I like that. It has music in it. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll have to see what the reviews say. Okay. And I don't know if that's, that's this year, right? I, I, I guess yeah, I really didn't pay much attention because I was like, oh, a little big planet. I guess that's cool. But I just never, never really was into it. Yeah. So and I think it's probably one of those things that, that is a lot more fun co-op, which I guess is true for all games. But I think there are games that it's like, it's like, okay, this game just stops being bad when it's co-op yeah. versus this game can be played single player, but it's really designed for co-op. Yeah. And I think in that case, it's all right. And I think there's probably a, definitely an interesting discussion to be had there. But uh, but yeah, I just I just never got into. It. I didn't think it was like bad, but I was just not like I want to play more of this. Yeah. Uh, but I know like a lot of people love those games. So uh, next one I want to talk about High Roll Legends. Yeah, so it's basically like Dynasty Warriors, which I haven't played Dynasty Warriors, but I've seen some gameplay. That's kind of why I'm interested in because I've never played a Dynasty Warriors, but there's like is there nine of them or something? Stupid? There's eight now. I think eight. Okay, yeah. but it's a it's a series that pe- it's a beloved series. Yeah, like people are totally into it. So. For me, it's kind of a good opportunity to be like, all right, let's see what all the fuss is about. Like, yeah, but in High Rule, yeah, exactly. So that'll be. I, I'm definitely interested in that one because uh, I only recently I'd heard about the Dynasty Warriors, but I never really watched anything. And I've recently mm-hmm. watched some videos on it, and I was like, oh, that actually looks like the type of game I would enjoy. Yeah, uh, and I saw it was on Steam now. Actually, High Rule Warriors Eight is. And I had thought about getting it, but I never did. <laughs> uh, Dynasty Warriors or Dynasty? What did I say? Said High Rule oh. Warriors. <laughs> They're I, mixing them together. I like Hyrule Warriors, actually. But uh, Dynasty Warriors, I, I looked at it. It definitely looks like the type of game I would enjoy, but I just haven't bought it yet. So, hey, I took Hyrule Legends instead and do it as Link and Zelda. Do you know Zelda. if that's going to be this year? Or? I want to say that was this year. I okay. think they said this year. I could be wrong, but that I think it cool. was this year. Uh, new Zelda game? Yeah, that's awesome. The only thing is, like, I'm, I'm, very, I'm tempering expectations quite a bit right now because they have a... They show off things like, and then like, like, look at this open world. You can do this thing, and then when it comes out, it's way scaled down. Yeah, well, they said um, they they drew a lot of inspiration from like the first Zelda, where you could just pretty much you start you off, can go wherever you want, yeah, you go where the hell you want. You want to do Dungeon Five first, knock yeah. yourself out, like have fun. I mean, it's going to be tough, but you can do it. I just remember how disappointing the overworld was in Nintendo in Ocarina of Time, because Nintendo specifically said like. Look at this open field, and you got an opponent, and you can ride your horse around, and it's like, it was just this big, desolate landscape, and there mm-hmm. wasn't much to do in the overworld, and it was really just a big hub that you would go from dungeon to dungeon from the overworld, but it was nothing more than a boring hub, uh, and that's what I'm aff- like. That's why I'm tempering expectations because it's like I've said that before, you know. And earlier, they, I mean, you could say that it was open world with, like, Wind Waker because you <laughs> got in this, but it was this big, like, aquatic open world where you had to set sail to a different point to point, you know. So you're still going to get lots of direction, I bet. Um, or maybe not. I mean, I would love to see a Zelda with no direction. Mm. They've always, they've gotten worse and worse with hand-holding. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, but I, I, that's what was so fun about the first one is that you got no direction. Well, I mean, they showed that with Mario Kart because we talked about this. We were yeah. playing like they don't tell you shit. Like you pick your racer, and it's like pick a car. It's like, well, is there any difference? Yeah. And like pick a tire. Okay, is there any difference? It doesn't tell you how to accelerate. Mm-hmm. It doesn't tell you how to brake. It doesn't tell you shit. Like he just like throws you in. Which I think that's kind of like that's not hand holding. That's telling me how to play your goddamn yeah. game. But the thing is, I kind of this is maybe another unpopular opinion. I like the return to. Um, I guess figuring out a game's mechanics through like uh, socializing. So like you and me have talked about like, oh, I noticed this, or yeah. I read this, or I talked to this other person, and it's like, 
Uh, I think that's what happened a lot with uh, Dark Souls too, or Demon Souls, is that people figured these things out and got on forums and talked about it. And it's like, and I know it's like you think like, well, Mario Kart shouldn't be like mm. that complicated. You should just know this the stats right. and all this stuff. But it's kind of cool to to discover it and communicate it like with with a friend. Yeah, because I just yeah. remember going to school and talking about you know. But realistically, that doesn't really happen now. It's like, how do I do this? Yeah. Open Google. Yeah, I and know. Search for it. So, I mean, and it wasn't, in Mario Kart, it's not deep enough, or at least the, the basic mechanics aren't difficult enough that, oh, wow, I mean, I just basically hit buttons until I figured out what shit did. Yeah. But I still feel like I might be missing stuff because it didn't bother to tell me anything. But it would be cool to see a Zelda where, like, you don't know where to go and you just kind of yeah. explore. Like, cause that would be I interesting. I just remember... Uh, like it's funny because I just somehow grew up knowing where the dungeons are in Zelda. I don't remember just like, doing it. You got Nintendo power, man. You well, were, you no, the my power. brothers like told me there's level one, there's level two, and yeah. to this day I can still go do yeah. them in order for the most part. I think I, I think this is a challenge we need to verify. Yeah, you have to go to the dungeons in order, but no, no cheating. You have to fi- finish them. You just have to go in there. Load it up. Say, oh, this is level one, and then go out. Go to level two. Well, uh, some of the dungeons you need items to get to unlock. You could at least get to the part where you need to go there, like the raft part. Like you say, okay, this dot goes to the next level. Oh oh boy! Yeah, look at the big brain on brain over here. (laughs) But uh, yeah, I'm definitely interested in that. Uh, Maybe I can actually finish a Zelda game. I think I think this game's gonna be a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're and, well, always slow. Did they confirm 2015 or no? I don't even think they said anything about date. Really? Just like, okay. We're working on Zelda. And where's the freaking Metro? Oh, we already talked about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's that other game that's coming out that some people yeah. give a shit about. The Nintendo game. Smash mm. Brothers. Oh, yeah. Man, all right. I feel ridiculous for admitting this, but I am really excited about the stupid little action figures. I think a few people have begrudgingly admitted. I'll admit it. I'm ashamed of it, and I'll admit it. Like, <laughs> I want all of them. The, the The impression I've got on Twitter is, God, those figures are so stupid, but I want all of them. Yeah, like, they look <laughs> really cool. Like, Yeah, they do look I cool. I feel like the detail on them, like, and granted, I, I'm trying to, like, temper my expectations, because for all I know, when they come out, like, those were, those Cheapy, were like, plastic yeah, garbage. like, really crappy ones, but the detail on them looks really good. With it being Nintendo, I tend to think they'll probably be pretty good quality. I think so, too. I just don't know what the pricing is going to be. Because I want to own all of them. And that means it's prob- I'm probably going to spend $100. It's going to be and expensive. I just yeah. hope Sarah's not listening right now. But I'm probably <laughs> going to spend $100 on little This is a Sarah-free zone. Figures. Please right, turn off the podcast yes. for 30 seconds. Yes. But, yeah, it's... I, I admit, like, I totally like the figures, too. I'm not even into Smash Brothers. Like, I never yeah. got into it. We I had one group of friends. We, we, like, rented it once, and we played it. And, you know, we liked it good enough, but mm-hmm. we weren't like, holy shit, like, let's spend the rest of our lives playing this game. Yeah. Like, so I've never quite understood the Smash hype. Uh, but then again, like I said, I don't really have it. By the time the first Smash came out, I was kind of, wasn't, like, with my friends playing Nintendo games at that point. It was like playing PC games and, and whatnot online and shit like that. So so I kind of missed that mm-hmm. initial cool little time where it's like, because if, if it would have came out when I was like 10, I'd probably be like, shit, yeah, Smash. Because yeah. we played the hell out of like Street Fighter and other things oh, yeah. on the Super Nintendo. So, But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people are definitely hyped for this. So we'll, we'll I'm, I'm interested to see like what other things they do with those action figures, like what other games. Because like, the idea is that if you get a Luigi or a Mario Amiibo, that it will work with multiple games down the road. Like hmm. you're not just gonna buy the Smash Brothers Mario Luigi. Like, granted, they'll they'll put out new waves of Amiibos. Which why are they called Amiibos? Because but, why do they call it the Wii? Why do they call it the Wii U? <laughs> because they are terrible at coming up with names. They really are bad at naming. Things. God, yes, they are. Uh, but it, it it will be able to save your stats from multiple games, and I think that could be really cool. So here's what I don't understand about the figures. Like, and I read a few articles trying to describe it, and I'm still like lost. Like, I buy a Luigi figure. Mm-hmm. What and and I in the sense it's mostly for Smash for right now. What does that get me in Smash? I think you can unlock abilities if you have, uh, like, 
say you're playing with one character and then you put a different character's amiibo on there, you might be able to like summon them or something. Hmm. But I don't know. I know it like tracks your progress and your right. levels and you can unlock things as you level up your amiibo. Um, and you have to feed it and you have to care for it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Tamagotchi. oh, wow. No. Really? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess probably the smartest thing for me to do is to hold off and see what the gameplay yeah. uh, mechanics are really like. Um, but like just seeing them, I want to buy them to put on my desk. Yeah, see, that's like, what I thought. I was like, I like to pick the ones that I really like, like Bowser or whoever. And like, ah, oh, those are just kind of cool to have. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it's they're gonna make. Let's be honest, they're gonna make money hand over. Oh yes, that shit. Like, yes, they're gonna make a lot of money. And I think it's still funny when people talk about how like, man, Nintendo's they're about to die. Whatever. Oh yeah, they have ten billion dollars cash in the bank. Yeah, they're not. They're not in they're any way. Fine. Yeah, that's why I say when I, when I said earlier, I hope they crash and burn. They Realistically, that's not gonna happen for, for a two long time. More yeah. console generations, like. That's yeah. yeah, that's the situation there. That's why yeah, I I agree. I tend to laugh people say, "Oh, they're they're doomed now." Yeah. It's like, "No, no they're not. They've got shitloads of money." Yeah. No, they're fine. I mean, they're not doing good now, and obviously if they yeah. don't pull themselves out, yeah. then they're, they're in trouble. They're a few losing years. money, but they've still got lots of money. Yeah. Um all right. So, Crackdown. I never played any of the other Crackdowns, but I've heard they're fun. I've played uh I I played to completion the first one. I didn't. I don't think I ever played the second. So my understanding was it was kind of like Saints Row, but some people were saying it was more like superpower type thing. Yeah, you you like you don't have like flying ability, but you have like super jump. You can jump far. Yeah, you can jump and you can run fast, and uh, you get these orbs that increase your abilities over time. So when you start out, you're like slightly superhuman. Yeah, like you're jumping a little higher than you should. Like you know, but you're nothing really special. But what was cool about it is um, the the climbing uh, mechanic of the buildings was set up in such a way that you'd have to, like, you know, like, it was actually kind of difficult to plan your route to climb up a really tall building. Yeah. And um, early on, there's a lot of climbing you couldn't do because of the spacing of the window ledges yeah. and all this stuff. And so collecting orbs and navigating that area and, like, finding you know climbing up all these different skyscrapers and stuff it was pretty fun like i I've, I've heard pretty much nothing but good yeah, things about Crackdown. yeah it, it is a fun game and uh it's funny how like that series exists because uh it was the original crackdown was bundled with uh halo 3 beta key huh and so you wonder what like in an alternate world like what would it look like if it didn't have anything bundled with it like uh, it was one of like those portal. things. Yeah, it it could have been like it was a, it could have been a sleeper hit that people like talked about, but it didn't sell a lot. Yeah, and it wouldn't have warranted a Crackdown two or a Crackdown three. You know. Yeah. So I'm assuming this is just called Crackdown three, right? Um, I think so. Or is it just called Crackdown? I, or I I don't recall exact. I wrote down Crackdown, but it could yeah. be Crackdown three. Uh, I was just kind of jotting these quickly, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's that's going to be on which systems? Probably just Xbox One. Okay, I couldn't remember if that was exclusive or not. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's a Microsoft game. Is series. it console exclusive? Is it time exclusive? Is it console uh, time exclusive? <laughs> man, all uh, that crap is so stupid. Uh, oh, is. like I was excited to hear about the Dead Rising Three DLC, mm-hmm. but that's going to be exclusive to the Xbox One, isn't it? I didn't heard them saying that. I thought, in fact, I thought them. I heard them say that it. They were like thinking about it or whatever. Okay. Kind of the general vague. Because I like, know maybe Dead Rising Three is also coming out for PC, which is super. I'm hyped about. Is it coming out for PS4? I don't think so. It's dumb. So it's console exclusive to yes. Xbox One. Yeah, so it's not exclusive; it's console exclusive. What a great time to be a gamer! <laughs> but uh, yeah, super hype for Dead Rising yeah. Three on PC. But uh, yeah, uh, next game, a game that I'm very much looking forward to: Witcher Three. It was pushed back to next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is actually one game I did keep up with it with the release date, and was a bit disappointed. 
Honestly, I don't really get that disappointed anymore when a push when a release date gets pushed back because I get so much other crap to play. It's yeah. just like, oh, okay, well, I just won't get to play it. Yeah, sooner and later, it's later it's than good sooner. to see it get pushed back, so it'll be better than it was. Yeah. So yeah, it's. I mean, the game looks good, Lord. Like I don't know what they're doing over there, but graphics wise, those guys are yeah. amazing. That's like, even cool. Witcher Two still looks really good, and mm-hmm. it's a few years old. Like Witcher Three. Just from the and it tends to be like I don't think this is gonna be a witch, watchdog situation where they're gonna show this game off and then when you play it it's gonna look far worse. Yeah. Uh, well, not far worse, but just worse. But I, but Witcher Two I looked amazing and I think this game is already looking incredible. More open world and I Witcher One I did not like at all. I thought yeah. it was just not a fun game. It blows my mind that that game got like an eighty average. So can I just skip that one? Witcher one, yes. Yeah. Oh, God, let okay. yes, Lord, yes. Do I need to read up on the the plot or something? I would. Or, okay, I'd go to Wikipedia, the, read yeah. the synopsis, and then play Witcher two. Yeah, all right. And then Witcher two, I really enjoyed. Now the combat is still. I feel like the combat in Witcher two is still not where it needs to be. It feels like a clunky Dark Souls as yeah. far as the combat goes. Like it's punishing, like if you screw up. But I also feel like you're not. It's more like chunky i yeah. guess like controlling yourself uh, as opposed to dark souls i feel like they really pretty much nailed the combat pretty good other than a few hiccups here and there and this will be the first witcher that's on consoles right witcher 3 witcher 2 was witcher 2 on xbox 360 i want to say it might have been i don't remember exactly yeah it might have been pc exclusive okay it, it's either way I, it might have been i don't remember but yeah um I hope that doesn't hurt it in any way. I hope that they don't like dumb down the areas because a lot of times, like, well, it's on console yeah. and it doesn't have as much RAM. So we I have think to the put one thing, yeah, the, the hidden RAM loading thing zone. Is, uh, I think the one thing helping it though is how similar the architectures are. I mean, they're both yeah. x86, and so it's not like they're having to dumb it down for some other, like, um, you know, the cell or some complicated architecture that's so right. Different. Or it's you know, and the RAM isn't as big of an issue, but like yeah. you had like in Thief, for example, the new Thief that came out, you had those like areas that were obviously loading zones, yeah. and it just really screwed the flow, screwed the flow of the game up because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you have to go to this area while you slowly edge your way through this tiny alley, and it's yeah. like, I know what this is, guys. Come on, like yeah. stop pretending what it is and what is it. But uh, yeah, I'm totally hyped for that game. I love Witcher 2. And uh, what, what the big thing, I know I talked about this before, but uh, very briefly, the one ama- cool last thing about Witcher 2 was there's this one choice you make in the game and it branches. And it's not one of those things where I was thinking when I was playing it, I was like, oh, well, I probably have like this quest NPC wouldn't give me any quests if I had done this route. And then maybe I get like two or three extra quests. You know, that's the way it normally yeah. is. Or this NPC is swapped out with this one, and you get different quests. It's like, okay, well, you still up in the same area. You still doing the same majority of the quests. Somebody was telling me, no, if you make a choice different, it's totally splits off. Wow. Like it's a totally new area, totally different quests. That's cool. Uh, and I think that's freaking really cool. Like, wow, what game has done that recently? Like, nope, where it's no. like significant. <laughs> you go to a completely I can't think different of any. area. So that's really awesome. It'd be interesting to see if they do the same thing with Witcher 3, where you make a choice that has a, a serious impact yeah. on where you go. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely high. I actually like Witcher 2 so much, I uh, actually Sarah bought me uh, one of the books, and I read through the books, and I enjoyed that. So I'm, I'm Weren't those originally hyped. written in another language? Like, yeah, uh, it's, it's Polish. Uh, Polish? Or... Yeah. yeah. The development team is in Poland as yeah. well. It's crazy to see a, such an ambitious, like... yeah. Triple A, I mean, you'd call it a triple A game, right? I mean, just like looking at it graphically, like, yeah, oh, yeah, and it's coming from Poland, yeah, triple A game from Poland. Like, I would have never guessed, yeah. And apparently, even like Obama was talking to somebody in Poland, like, really, Poland. and he, I think he mentioned like the game Witcher 3. I Obama did, or this other guy, I think so, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, obviously, he probably just you know gave him a list of facts about Poland, like, this yeah. is cool things about Poland that you probably yeah. don't know or slash care about. But and so you know, probably threw that out there, but and I haven't heard the actual quote or whatever. But um, so, but uh, yeah, it was one of the PR things that I got about uh, about that company. But I'm 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 definitely super hyped for it. You should definitely yeah. play Witcher Two. All right, it's pretty. It can be pretty tough though. Just fair warning. Yeah. Uh, for a last game I had at least for Far Cry Four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I still haven't played a Far Cry game Nor except I. <laughs> for Blood Dragon. Blood Dragon was awesome. I have that. I need to play that. You need to play that. It's yeah. not even that long. 
Like, especially if you don't do all the side stuff, yeah. it's not going to take you that long. Like, the, they just totally were like, fuck it, we love the 80s. Yeah. This is an I 80s movie game. Like, it is so ridiculous. Even they, they even got Kyle Reese to do the voice <laughs> acting for the so main awesome. character. And, like, the dialogue and shit is just, oh, it's perfect. Like, yeah. especially, like, if you're, like, us and you, like, grew up in the 80s on the 80s movies. Or if you just like 80s movies. Like, I watched the intro. Like, I started it. But I didn't, like, play it much more. Like, And they've got, like, the, the, the one song playing and you're blowing yeah. enemies away from the helicopter. Like, the guy's, like... But really, like, sealed it for me. Like, this game was going to be amazing when they're, like, doing a cinematic and they, like, grasp hands together and they, like, mm-hmm. flex their muscles. I'm like, oh, this is going to be an amazing awesome. game. But, uh, but yeah, so, I think I'm I'm pretty excited about Far Cry 4. Yeah. It looks like a lot of fun, especially the co-op stuff. Like, yeah, the drop-in, drop-out. Drop the Sony demo. Yeah. Where I the guy so. was, like, just on a stupid looking helicopter. Yeah. Like, you could, yeah, like ride it. an elephant. It just, yeah. Like, it looks so... Like over the top, stupid, like a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I actually I bought Far Cry Three on the Steam sale, and I really want to finish it before Far Cry Four comes out. Yeah, and might, it's supposed to be this year, I isn't think it? I have Far Cry Three. I don't know. Yeah, I think it is this year. I'm, man, I'm yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably get it, especially if I beat Far Cry Three and enjoy it, which I probably will. Then I almost. We should get it for the PS Four. No. That's first person shooting in it. That means but it's like, console. I don't know. It seems, it doesn't seem like, um, I don't know why. It, 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 it seems like a console first person That doesn't make any sense to me. I know, it doesn't. Those words you're speaking is random words. Yeah, like a Halo. Like, no. it would be weird to play Halo on... With a superior control scheme? Yes. Yes. Hmm. I could see that with something like Dead Rising. Or not Dead Rising, but Dead Space. I always get those two names yeah. screwed up. Because like... The Dead Space 1, well, the whole idea, person, right? well, yeah, but the point with Dead Space 1, the controls are supposed to be a little clunky because you're supposed to just be some engineer, yeah. like, shooting a, a welding gun, basically. Yeah. So it was supposed to be, like, you're not supposed to be, like, super agile and, yeah. you know, whatever, getting headshots and left and right. So it's supposed to be a little, like, clunky-ish, uh, but... All right, you know, well, just... then I'll play on the PC. I think, yeah, I think you're... Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, and also, I feel like too, a fool now. You do. You yeah. should. But I mean, worst case scenario, you just have your controller hooked up and pick that up whenever you feel like it. Because I'll do that, like in uh, Sleeping Dogs and in Watch Dogs as well. Where if I'm driving a car, I usually switch to the controller, yeah. and then when I get out, I'll put it down and switch to the keyboard and mouse. I just feel like at this point, I I, I wouldn't see a huge graphical increase on my PC coming from the PS4. Probably not. Well, I don't know. And there's something to be said about just, like, being able to pop it in and play. Like, I like that. I like the simplicity of the console. But have you really had an issue with that lately? I mean, just popping a game in digitally, figuratively speaking. Yeah. When's the last time you really had serious technical issues with a recent game? Oh. That wasn't, like, due to, like, just overall problems with the game, like, in general. It's just the idea of, like... Tweaking settings to get the best performance is kind of annoying. That's what, no, that's how you upgrade. <laughs> that way you don't have to worry about tweaking. Oh, You're I just see. like yeah. ultra, ultra, ultra. Okay, ready to go. Right, right. <laughs> I'm actually getting to the point now where I can't do that anymore. Yeah. Where I can't just like it's ultra sad, max. It's a sad day, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. like, I'm good. Which, I mean, I could still run it on mostly ultra, but it's usually yeah. like, okay, shadows, you need to go down a little bit. Yep. But most everything else, I can still run it mostly. It's crazy how shadows are like the yeah. final frontier of like performance. <laughs> it's yeah. like, turn that off and you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, usually I can do ultra with low shadows. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm fine with that. I'm okay with shadows being a little little lower. But uh, yeah, it's it's slowly getting there. That's always the start, though. When you start like... When you first get that new badass card, yeah. you just ultra automatically yeah, don't even think feeling. about it. Or even when you do auto detect and it's like ultra everything, it's like yeah, yeah well, all right, all right, right. You got enough, you can handle it. Like, <laughs> but then no the more. game's like, are you sure you want to? Tone- yeah, let me tone this down a little bit. You're I like, think hey. it's the first time auto detect doesn't give you ultra. It's like, oh, well, you don't think I can handle it? By the way, there's still not a machine that can run Witcher Two other than like Dual Titans, Witcher Two on everything. That's just mm-hmm. insane. That game is what? There's like, two years old? There's like some like vanity setting which doesn't really help that much, but it just mm-hmm. I forget which setting it is, but it like completely just brings your machine to its knees. Like 
I have a pretty nice video card. It's a GTX 680, mm-hmm. and my overall machine is pretty nice. But I like, yeah, I'll try, I'll try everything. Yeah. And like last year, I was like, my god, I'm getting like 10 frames a second. This is crazy. And then like I did some searching, and people were like, yeah, don't turn that on. So <laughs> I like wow. turned it down. And it was went totally was fine. And I was like, oh wow, I was like, okay. Hmm. But that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, another game, uh, Destiny. If you you didn't play the alpha at all, I didn't get yet? to because I was out of town. But it looks like a lot of fun. I played uh, the alpha a bit on PS4. Um, I gotta say, like I enjoyed it, but I guess I was expecting more because it seems like From it's the just alpha. Like, well, I mean, I guess I didn't really keep that much up with it because it's not been slated for PC and it's a first person shooter, so I automatically yeah. just wipe yeah. it off my memory. But I was like, oh, you know, I'll try it. Give it a fair shake. And like I said, it was fun. Um, but it was like run around and shoot things and do like your standard quests. Like go kill this thing or go kill these. Yeah. And then you'll get a reward. And yeah, I'm Dinklage, curious if uh, they're going to be able to fill in things to make that structure more interesting. Whether it's like good story or good content or better level design um, or mission variety. I feel like uh, it's really odd and unique that they're putting out an alpha because I feel like it's not going to buy them that much positive press. It can only hurt them, like, at this point. But I don't think it did. Yeah, yeah no, I don't think it hurt because I didn't, I mean, I didn't see much negative about it. I, I, other, other than Peter Dinklage's voice acting. I got to say, like, I love the I don't, dink. I didn't hear about that. What happened? I love the dink, okay? Yes. And I'm good enough terms with... Mr. Dinklage to just call him the Dink. We're right. cool. You guys are cool. Yeah. Uh, and I lo- and when I recognize, well, actually, it was Donnie that recognized his voice, and I was like, "Holy shit, that's Peter Dinklage!" Because I'd forgotten he was doing the voice acting, and I, I kept playing that. it, and I was like, "Like, part of my brain was going, that's that's bad, that's really bad." I'm like, "No, no, 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 it's it's fine. He's he's Peter Dinklage. He knows what he's doing." But I kept just listening to his voice lines, and I'm like. Those are just bad, man. I'm like, all right, yeah. just shut your goddamn mouth, you piece of shit. It's fine. Just shut up. But then, like, I saw, like, an article on uh, Kotaku, and it was, I, it mentioned it. And I was you like, You know, they're redoing God. it. They're redoing it. I would this. hope so. Yeah. Because, like, I was, cause I was like, maybe it's just me. Because, like, I couldn't hear anybody else talking about it. And I'm not one who's picky about voice acting, but it was mm-hmm. pretty bad. So was it just flat? It's very tone? flat. Okay. It's just very flat. Um, and I think he's supposed to be like a robotic little companion because that's a funny thing. It's alpha, so this is understandable. But like he's talking, and you're like, "Who the fuck is that? Is that supposed to be me? It's like, is that me talking? Or is that like, <laughs> what the hell is that? Like, so finally I figured out. Oh, I think it's your like little robot companion dude who comes yeah. out sometimes. But yeah, it was just, and I think maybe like because he's supposed to be a robot, he was like trying to deliver the lines more like factual. But it just, it just did not work at all. And uh, luckily, I wasn't the only one who was like, "Oh, that's really bad." Yeah, but I I love you, Dinklage. Dink, you're my hero. You're my hero. I love you. Go watch Station Agent if you haven't watched it. But um, but yeah, it's it's um, uh, it was it was fun, but it wasn't like it was just basically running yeah. around. It was like running around. It was like an MMO with guns. I think that that game is dependent upon like getting a group of people together to play online at the same time. Yeah, I can see if you got four people together and just moving from mission to mission with four yeah. buds, that could be really fun. It's just, when but is you... that good? The game design, or is that just fun because it's co-op? I see, think we're that's back good to that game question. design. I mean, I think you're still so you have like a very standard game, but you add co-op, so now it's like good game design. See what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, but I guess if the if missions are of... structured in such a way that the the team has to function individually so it's like i have to go do this thing while you do this yeah. thing and we've got to work together like yeah that would be good co-op design like the gears of war one the co-op was pretty i felt i like pretty it pretty good like that yeah i it's funny how I, I still think that's like the the pinnacle of co-op third person action <laughs> is there a lot of co-op third person action yes really there is and since that game there's been a lot but no one has met it like in terms of branching paths and like you take the high road i'll take the low road you know stuff like that it's always been like yeah there's this other guy who's also fighting with you like yeah he's controlling you know the npc that you would have been on the first session whatever yeah um 
But yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'm trying to think of other ones, but like Dead Space 2 three, or three, 3, yeah. I had co-op stuff and Resident Evil 5 and Earth Defense Force and a bunch of other ones. Hmm. Yeah. I don't I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. assume I'm correct. Uh, yes, you sound correct. Oh, uh, another game I definitely wanted to talk about real quick was Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth or whatever it's called. I think it's just called Beyond Earth. I heard Earth. about that, but I didn't like see anything specific about it. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Like uh, It's basically like Civilization, except in space. Oh, so Alpha Centauri. Um, but like apparently you have like branching like paths. You can be more... like. You want to preserve the natural order of that planet, yeah. so you try to build like uh, unobtrusively. And then there's the ones who want to be like loyal to what humans once were, so they want to avoid like techno- like certain technologies. So I mean, that sounds interesting, and I love Civilization. So I mean, I'm going to buy it regardless. Um, I remember the funny thing when people talk about Alpha Centauri is, I recall that game getting pretty mediocre feedback when it first it's yeah, another one of those games that, it, but i remember like people weren't that thrilled about it. right and it, but now when people talk about it it's like, oh alpha centauri god that game was amazing i'm like really people i think I, that I happens got it. a lot like I've, um yeah, oh it does just the more time that elapses the more people like kind of have goggles nostalgia goggles the thing oh yeah because like i'm going back and playing a bunch of these old games and some of them hold up really well and some of them don't yeah um and it's even hard to go back and play games sometimes and be fair. Yeah. Because, like, I just, I played through the original Thief again a few months ago. And, like, if I was just playing that game for the first time ever, I'd probably been like, holy shit. Like, yeah. what an archaic piece of shit. But, well, like, but, and there was parts I definitely got pissed off about. Yeah. But I still loved it. Like It's funny. Like, I, I back in the day, I played Ninja Turtles for the NES. Oh, God. Yeah. And I loved that game. I played yeah. it a ton. I didn't know any better. And it is like now I like read about it and I still like it. Like I, I just I, I like it. Like I think it it controls pretty well. But people like Wait review. Ninja Turtles controls yeah. with the space jumping? Yeah, like you could control the space jumping. It was like it felt like it was it pretty, was like, hard, floaty. but it was responsive. I wouldn't call that responsive. It felt like floaty to me. I never liked the jumping in that game. But I mean, as a kid, I liked it because I'm playing a Ninja Turtles game. This yeah. is cool. But like, if I but play yeah, it now, I read it now. It's universally panned. Yeah, and it's just like, man, I like. Well, that. the angry video game nerd hated it, so you know it was banned. He hates everything. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, and his movie's coming out soon. Oh yeah, they were actually going to screen it in Atlanta, but like, I'm working, so I can't see it. Well, I'm maybe, disappointed. I was actually a backer. It? I was like a hundred dollar backer on that one. Maybe I, I could him. use your ticket. Well, I, don't, I didn't get a ticket. You didn't get a ticket oh, with the backing. I did get his autographed picture, though. That was pretty cool. When is it? I, it's really it's soon, I think. It's really soon, I think. Um, I need to look it up, then. You should. You should go watch it for me. Yeah. I mean, I'll no. tell, I'll tell but you. But you need to know it. what to expect going in. Like, like it's going to be very campy, I'm sure. It's going to be very, like... It's sold? Yeah. I mean, like, I is, love... Is, is it about video games, or is it, like... It's The story is, like, it's kind of funny how this times out, but it's about, like, AT&T... Or AT, AT&T. Uh... Uh, E.T. Uh-huh. and like the the cartridge and all yeah. that, which is funny because that whole ex, like they dug up the cartridges yeah. supposedly or whatever. Um, but that's just coincidence. He's been working on this game for years, but or this movie for years. But but yeah, like it's like I love the anger video game nerd. I've like seen every episode. I've bought like almost every season just to support him. Uh, I think he's fucking awesome. So yeah. uh, I really wanted to see this movie, and I know exactly what to expect going in, and I expect that I'll probably like it. Uh, yeah. I definitely don't think it's a movie for everybody. I think a lot of people are going to be like, this is total shit. And like, yeah. I can see that because it's not going to be... It's like going to watch a Rob Zombie movie. But like, what's it about? Like, I, I think it's something about him trying... I think it's him trying to, to uncover the truth about the burial of the AT&T. Or, well, AT&T, <laughs> what the fuck's wrong with my brain? AT&T. With the E.T. games... And, like, of course, it's, like, ridiculous. There's, like, a government conspiracy in it. Like, totally ridiculous over-the-top awesome. bullshit. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think that's the basic premise of of it. And it's been interesting being a fan of his, like, watching him, like, do it. Because mm-hmm. he's, like, that's what he wanted to do. Like, that's what he did to school for is to do movies and right. stuff. And the video game nerd was just, like, a side thing he did. Yeah. Like, oh, this will be funny. And, like, it just took off. So, of course, he's, like, done that because it's making him money. And 
the movies is what he really wanted. So this is like the first like real movie where he had to like rent mm-hmm. locations and hire all these actors. And it's interesting, like hearing all this. He's like, my God, it's like now I see why these movies cost so much money. Yeah. Because he's like, you know, oh, I'll get raise this money, and this seems like way more than I need. And it's like, nope, it's like this shit's expensive, like renting yeah. out the locations and all this other shit you have to do. Like he's just, it's crazy how much stuff is involved in this. Like even going to school, you should expect this, and it's like even more than you thought. But uh, anyway, that's cool. But yeah, I um, interest. But yeah, angry video game nerds. He's amazing. But yeah, Civilization Beyond Earth. I think uh, I'm, that's that a, that's a day one pickup for me. Next year or this year? Or? Not sure. Yeah, not sure. Well, um, I feel like uh, that was a good return. We were a month <laughs> <laughs> since our last episode. See you next month. Yeah, no, yeah. we're. I mean, uh, we need to work out a better schedule. Yes, we do. We I need, need to, to like we're going to work being out. unemployed. That's what I need. Yeah, yeah, I and I need answer. to. Um, I don't know. Just be. You should be unemployed. Less too. lazy. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. maybe get off my ass every once in a while and come over here and record an episode. Yeah. Um, I did want to give a quick shout out to uh, a friend of mine who has a podcast called The Casual Observers, and uh, I was actually on their last episode talking about all manner of pop culture minutia, such as uh, RoboCop, The Flaming Lips, uh, Fargo, uh, uh, even old video games. So there's some video game stuff in there, but um. Casual Observers uh, is the name of their podcast. And where can the folks at home find you? Uh, my main area is youtube.com slash vertigo tea party. You might have heard mention of that oh, yeah. several times. I wish you'd mention it every uh, once in a while. I know I should. Uh, also on Twitter is Malachi VT. That's M A L A C H A I V T. All right. And you can find me at Capanius, C A P A N E dot U S, and on Twitter at C A P A N E underscore U S. Have a nice week, folks. Bye-bye.